team in tackles with a total of 75 stops on the season. And uh, Kevin Kane, Charles Gordon, or Ronnie Amati will be in one quarterback spot with Akib Talib at the other. And we also might see Theo Baines in there in a starting role if Gordon starts on the offensive side. The strong safety is Jerome Kemp. And the free safety, Rodney Fowler. Rodney uh, leading the team in interceptions with three takeaways for the year. So those are the Kennedy starting lineups for this afternoon's football game. David Lawrence, who's with us again, uh, as always, down on the sideline. David, a great day for football and uh, a big crowd on hand. And this indeed is a most important game for the Big Blue. Yeah, it's a big game, Max, in so many ways, and it should be a near-capacity crowd on a great day. There'll be a pretty stiff breeze out of the south, maybe as high as 15 miles an hour. There could be a little bit of factor in the kicking game, but a very talented Missouri team coming to town. Certainly, they've got memories. This Kansas defense, the linebacker core, they've stopped Brad Smith two consecutive years. Can they do it again? It'll be a different type of offense that Brad Smith will be operating. It's going to be a empty set backfield. It's going to be five wide receivers. The tight ends that you mentioned are good, but they'll actually be split out like the receivers. Brad Smith will have to run some option. He'll run quarterback draw, quarterback sweep. Kansas defense will see if they can come up with a hat trick in stopping this Missouri offense. On the other side of the ball, zone blitz. Missouri Tigers like the zone blitz. They're perfectly suited to stopping the pass. The best two players are safeties. They have a rush in, but very, very quick. Kansas has to run the ball at Missouri today to have success. All right, David, thank you very much. And stay tuned now. The kickoff is next as you listen to Jayhawk football. And the officials today, the referee is Tom Walker. Hugh Douglas is the umpire. Curtis Graham is the head linesman. Mike Liner is the line judge. James Hatfield is the side judge. Derek Roan Dunn is the field judge. And Mark Johnson is the back judge. Missouri won the toss. They deferred. Kansas then has elected to receive the football. And so then Missouri chose to defend the south goal, taking advantage of the rather brisk wind, which is predicted to pick up as the afternoon wears along. But the sun has broken out. It's a perfect day for football here in Lawrence. And once again, those two old rivals, the Kansas Jayhawks and the Missouri Tigers, are set to do battle. This has been a series marked by underdogs winning many times, by uh, games that have been decided in the final seconds. Uh, not often do you have a blowout, but once in a while one occurs, uh, such as the day when Tony Sands rushed for 397 yards on 58 carries to lead the Jayhawks to a lopsided victory, and Tony set an NCAA record on the afternoon. But we're going to have fun today. Missouri's in white. Kansas wearing their home dark uniforms with red jerseys and blue helmets and white trousers, and so Davis, come in and tell us all about another Kansas-Missouri border showdown. All right, Max, we welcome listeners around the world uh, listening our way on uh, online through SBC Jayhawk Total Access. The best high-speed internet access on the market today is SBC Yahoo DSL. Cross it, the place kicker for Missouri. Adam Cross it will kick it right to left. Higgins at the goal line. High end-over-end -end kick with a win to his back. And there'll be no return. It's out of the end zone. Higgins actually caught it right on that back line. But JU will start against the wind and the Missouri defense at the Jayhawk 20-yard line. You know, it'd be interesting to know what percentage of kickoffs we've seen returned this year. I'll bet it's less than 25%. Seems like it's less and less all the time, doesn't it? Well, we talk about big drives, Bob and Max, and we'll do, say that throughout the broadcast. But certainly this is one. Kansas going into the win with an offense. And, of course, uh, has lacked confidence. A spark last week from Jason Swanson, or Swanson. Let's see if we can get the running game established. They need to establish a running game. Three wide outs to the near side, one on the far side. Swanson goes to the shotgun. Charles Gordon goes in motion. And it's a running play to Clark Green. Out across the 25, up to the 30, and a first down for the senior. First 
touchdown, Kansas, on the first play of the day. Boy, and Anthony Collins, who did get the start, apparently breaking Matt Thompson's long string of starts, is doing a little dance out there in celebration of a great big hole for a nice gain. And you don't want to make an early mistake in this game. Mark it at the 34-yard line again of 14 strikers. Shulock made the tackle for Missouri. First down, Jayhawks. Now Swanson goes under center. Two running backs. McAnderson in at fullback. And they go to Clark Green again. To his left, he goes to the 35 and up to about the 37. A gain of maybe three yards on the pickup. Marcus Bacon, the junior strong side linebacker from Houston makes the stop. David, how about this Missouri defense? Well, this Missouri defense is perfectly suited for stopping the pass. That's why Kansas needs to run. I think they will run successfully today. Clark did it a year ago. They've had two little zone replays on the inside of that Kansas offensive line. There have been some good plays on first down. Let's see if they can continue to do this. So the strength of this Missouri defense is in the secondary. Both these safeties are very talented, and also Brian Smith, Great run the rusher. The back to the shotgun, a bad snap, but Swanson picks it up and throws incomplete. He fired it to the far sideline over in the neighborhood of Brian Murph, who couldn't make the catch, but it'll be third and seven KU. John Cornish in the game now at running back. And who is Anthony Collins, who's starting at right tackle? He's a redshirt freshman out of Beaumont, Texas, who has come along with another redshirt freshman, Ryan Cantrell, to change the right side of the KU offensive line. Collins in just his third year playing football. He played one year in high school. Third and seven Jayhawks at their own 37-yard line. Three wide outs on the near side. One on the far side. Swanson back in that shotgun. He's got a pass in the air that is intercepted. Missouri's got it inside the 40-yard line. It's picked up by a Darnell Terrell. They saw it more out of Copperville Community College. Well, when Missouri gets you in that situation, they're going to come with some kind of extra pressure. They brought it. Jason's got to feel that pressure and not throw when you think you may be hit. Actually, Simmons was going to come back and make a break on the ball and be able to knock it down, but he actually slipped and coming back. And uh, just what Missouri wanted to have happen did so. This offense turning the ball over. It's a short field for the Tigers at the Jayhawk 38 yard line. First down. An early break for Mizzou. Brad Smith runs to the left, looks. Now he's going to carry the ball, and he's hit at the 36 by the senior from Rockers, Kevin Kane. A gain of a couple of yards for the dangerous Brad Smith. When they spread Kansas out, they like to use types of options. Even in a one-back set, they'll have triple option. They'll use a slot man to pitch to, and then also have an underneath man to do a shovel pass. And, of course, Brad Smith can also run the football. Oh, Missouri, second down and eight at the Jayhawk 36. Smith puts it in the air. It's complete over on the far side to Brad Ekwer Ekwu, and he's close to the first down. He was pushed out over there by the cornerback, Akib Talib. Uh, Jason Swanson made a judgmental error on his pass. Uh, as David said, as he was being hit, he should never have thrown the ball, and it had nothing on it. So Missouri with a great opportunity. Third and one, Tigers at the KU 29. Third and one, Mizzou. Brad Smith looks over to the Tiger bench. He's changing the play. Third down and one, Missouri. Back to the shotgun for Smith. There's the snap and a handoff given to the running back. And down he goes. The ball carried by the tailback, Marcus Woods. He needed only a yard, though, and I think he's got it. I don't know. It's uh, very close. Uh, James McClinton, Nick Reed teamed up in the tackle. They spotted he at the 30. They do not have a first down. He needed the 28 and a half yard line. And they spotted at the 30, and Missouri's going to go for it. Wow, that's a big gamble considering you have the wind at your back. It should be a doable field goal. They're going to go for it on fourth down, apparently. Smith in talking to his lineman. Perhaps changing the play. Fourth down, 12 on the play clock. Fourth and a yard and a half for Missouri at the Jayhawk 30. There's the snap. Smith's going to keep it, and he is hit. Close to the first down. I think he's got it. Yeah, he went on by by a good yard anyway. Kevin Kane made the tackle, but boy, Smith, you know, he's their, he's their spark plug, obviously, for their offense. And he touches the ball on every play. And he was hit in the backfield. It's just Brad Smith's strength that got him the first down. He got behind one of his offensive linemen leaning forward. And the gamble for Pinkle, the first one of this game, pays off Missouri first and ten. 
Tigers first first down. They set up at the KU 27. Smith on a running play gives the ball to his tailback. That is Marcus Woods. And Woods running laterally. Nailed after a short gain by Kane and James McClinton. Also Nick Reed in there, Max. Yeah, McClinton, uh, the primary tackler, and they did a good job that time of uh, containing Marcus Woods. Woods a little guy, uh, but very fleet of foot. He was injured a week ago and didn't play the second half against Nebraska. Let's see how that ankle hangs out. No score here in the first quarter. Here's Brad Smith rolling out to the right, looking, 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 and he's going to be hit and pushed out of bounds. Well, you don't often see him hesitate uh, a little bit confused as he was that time. I think he was looking. Good coverage. With, yeah, he was looking way downfield, uh, trying to get his uh, tight end open down there, but he loss of yardage. It'll bring up third and 13 for the Tigers. Banks Flutman led that defensive charge. Now third and 13. Missouri at the KU 29. KU needs to get pressure with just three and four man rush, and they were able to do that, keeping a lot of linebackers back. Smith on an empty backfield, looks over at the Tiger bench. They're flashing signs over there. Smith now turns, goes back up toward his center. Down to seven on the play clock. Now down to five. Smith back in the shotgun. There's the snap. He's back, a rush put on, and he throws. Incomplete, he got good pressure from the KU defenders. A lot of cat and mouse going on. Smith looking over to the bench and giving Smith the audible calls to make at the line of scrimmage. That's going to be more difficult as this bench is right in front of this Kansas uh, cheering section. All the students are right behind that Missouri Tiger bench, and I'm not so sure they got some clear calls there. David uh, Brandon Perkins really almost got to the quarterback there. Yeah, they gave pressure to Smith, and that's exactly what Kansas has to do today. And, of course, field goal attempt here, but Kansas defense did a good job. A 47-yard try from the right hash mark for Adam Crossett, who's got a strong leg. He's also got the wind at his back. Well, a 47-yard field goal try. The ball put down. The kick's on the way. It is no good. Yep, that was a real break for KU, and the Jayhawks come out of this uh, unscathed, at least for the moment. Time out here in the first quarter, 11:29 to play. No score on the Jayhawk Radio Network. 11:29 to play in the first quarter, Max, and the missed field goal by Adam Crossett, only his fifth miss of the year. He's hit 11 of them. KU's done a great job. Uh, they've held Missouri to seven plays and a total of nine. Now on the offensive side, Kansas has to rush the football. So the Jayhawks get it back at their own 29-yard line after their early turnover. Shotgun formation. Here's a handoff given to McAnderson, a big fullback out of Lawrence High School, and he runs to his left. And across the 30, and a late flag comes from the back judge after the play had been completed. Well, there was some pushing and shoving, and I think somebody's going to get called for a personal foul, would be my guess. Well, the Tigers are stopping over there. This goes against Kansas. This is hard. themselves at a disadvantage. Here comes referee Tom Walker to tell us who it was. Might be Anthony Collins. Personal foul, number 78 of the offense. Yeah, 15 yards for penalty. Second count. Yeah. It was Anthony yeah. Collins. But Matt Thompson immediately goes in to replace him. Well, that's a rookie mistake, that's isn't a, it? That's a freshman error. You just can't Damn. Why? have that kind of stuff. Second and 19 now for Kansas after the personal foul. KU backed up to its own 20 yard line now. Against the wind here, second and 19, and now movement on the lines, and flags go down. Somebody moved early, apparently, David. They did, and Kansas eventually moved. We'll see whether Missouri crossed the neutral zone before the movement of Kansas. Well, the Missouri also. players clapping their hands, if that means anything. And it probably does, Max. It's probably going to go against Kansas. Kansas is already backed up, so Missouri's movement spurred on an offensive lineman to move. Before the snap, ball start. 77 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. That's Bob Whitaker, the big left guard. And this is just the place that Missouri coaching staff wants to put the KU offense in. They want to put Swanson in a very predictable situation to pass, to bring some pressure, hitting from the backside like on the previous series and get another turnover. Two wideouts to the near side, one on the far side. It is second and 24 yards to go. And uh, they keep it on the ground this time. And 
Bart Green gets across the 15 up to about the 17. A very short pickup on that play. Now third and long, long yardage as Demarcus Scott, the junior defensive end, Max, made that tackle for Mizzou. And KU moving against the wind, of course, which is another uh, disadvantage. So they're getting in, in very bad field position. They were able to escape uh, any problems on that first Tiger possession. Boy, unless they get a big play here, Missouri will get the ball back in great shape on the field. Shotgun formation for Swanson and the Jayhawks. At the KU 18-yard line it is, third and long. Swanson is back, little shovel pass, and it doesn't go as Clark Green's tackled back at the 15-yard line. A great read by Missouri. If Clark could get through the first group of white shirts, he had some room, but Lorenzo Williams from Midwest City, Oklahoma, made a great play. Yeah, this wasn't going to be a first down, but he did have some room there. Conservative play calling, and that could go back to the interception on the previous series by Swanson, the coaching staff at Mangino not wanting to give Missouri the short field, knowing that this defense, if they can get a good punt by Tucker, will be in pretty good shape, judging by that first series. Tucker standing right at his own goal line. Marcus Woods at midfield for Missouri. There's the snap. Tucker steps into it. A high kick. The wind catches it. Woods asks for a fair catch, and he dives, and he's got it at the Kansas 45-yard line. Missouri will take over. Well, not as bad as you might have feared uh, if you're a Kansas fan. So the Tigers, although they're on the KU side of midfield, they're still 45 yards out, and we have a timeout here at Memorial Stadium in Lawrence. And Lincoln, Oklahoma, leading Nebraska 14-3. Midway second quarter here in Lawrence. No score. 9.26 to play first period. We'll be back. You're listening to Jayhawk football. Max got some interesting scores for you. I told you Oklahoma leading Nebraska 14-3 in the second quarter. Texas Tech 3, Baylor nothing early on. And Ohio State, Minnesota 17-17 in the first half. Oh, boy. Brad Smith's a graduate student out of Youngstown, Ohio. He's already finished up his school work, but he's staying on to be able to play football. And he and the Missouri offense out there, first down at the Kansas 45-yard line. He was responsible last week, get this, 480 yards of total offense against Nebraska. Former Rockers star Tony Temple's now in and running back for Mizzou, and Chase Kaufman, the freshman from Raymore Peculiar, is in there at tight end. And on first down, Brad Smith drops to the right, looks to throw, and he puts it in the air, and he just threw it away, threw it over on the track down on the oh, far yeah. side. That may be intentional grounding because uh, two or three officials dropped their yellow flags. And personal nope, foul, a Missouri. Personal foul. Wow, that, that'll move them back to their half of the field. That can't be intentional grounding because yeah. he was out of the tackle box and he threw it past the line of scrimmage, but... Uh, Personal fouls, uh, not not a good thing. Even in this uh, heated After rival play, game, you shouldn't have these kinds of foul, things, I'm sure. 22 in the offense. That, that is Tony Temple, Temple David. Middle yeah, there's a guy that's down. right on that Missouri-Kansas borderline, and uh, you got to keep your cool on these types of things. And Missouri has kind of squelched a pretty good field position. One personal foul on KU so far, and one on Missouri, so they've... He waited out on that. Second and 25, Missouri at the Tiger 40-yard line. Temple goes in motion left to right. Smith has the snap. He drops back, throws over the middle, and it is caught by Sean Coffey. They threw underneath to the wide receiver, but Kevin Keynes there to greet him after a pickup of about five yards. And there's some emotions going after oh, that. Oh, well, you're not kidding. There's some big-time talking going on down there, David. These That's linebackers, if they've really had the solution to stopping this offense too early. It's a different offense, same quarterback, same key there. But the key is after the catch, Kevin Kane brings him down immediately. Third and 22 for Missouri at the Tiger 43. Third and 22. Smith back, he's got the Temple to his right, the running back, twin receivers on each side. Smith's got the ball, he drops straight back. Now he runs out to the right, being chased. He looks to throw, he fires, and it is overthrown and out of bounds. Well, there's two onto the running track, and that time it was Boy. Como. Paul Como was really chasing him. Now, he sure was. And what Kansas is doing, they're not committing lots of people to the rush. They're gonna get three or perhaps four on most plays. They know they can get
get some pressure because they got some of the best defensive ends just with these three or four. That leaves them room to keep linebackers back looking for Smith to scramble and four or five people in the secondary to cover downfield. Adam Cross at the all-purpose kicker standing at his own 30. Charles Gordon at the 10 for KU. KU's got 10 men up on that line of scrimmage. Cross had a pretty good putter. He's also their place kicker. And there's the snap. Cross it sends it down the field. A high spiral. Gordon backs up, has it inside the 10, runs to the 15, to the 20, and stumbles across the 25 to about the 26, where he's hit by Chase Kaufman in on that kick team. And a late penalty flag is thrown. What's this all about? The flag up near midfield. Well, the Kansas crowd is cheering. We'll see what the call is on this, but a good return by the punt return unit. Personal foul on Missouri. And this might be on the Wichita Heights product, Xavier Jackson. Well, this would get Kansas. Uh, he and Mike Rivera were tangled up there, David. In perhaps the best field position of the day. So I'm sure both of these head coaches have been talking to their team about keeping their cool. We're going to have a revisit because this one is going to put Kansas in good After position. And we will Netball, get a timeout. Personal foul. Number 48 on the kicking. Yeah, it is on Jackson of Missouri. So a timeout with 8.20 to play first quarter. No score on the Jayhawk. Let's pass along a note from the Kansas Lottery. Play Powerball. Tonight's Powerball annuity jackpot, $27 million. Put yourself in a winning state. Play Kansas Lottery. Bob Davis, Max Falkenstein, David Lawrence, and producer engineer Bob Newt. KU with the ball at its own 41. First down. No score here in our first quarter from Lawrence. KU in the shotgun. Swanson. Inside handoff, fake to the running back. Swanson keeps up to the midfield strike. Then he fumbled the ball, and it's picked up by Missouri and brought into KU territory by the safety, David Overstreet. KU turned it over early on a pass interception. Now a Swanson fumble gives it back to Mizzou, Max. And you were just about to say, or I was, that it was a pretty good run by Jason. We hadn't seen him try any running at all in just a minute he was tackled the ball shoots out of his hands and KU commits its second turnover Jason made a good read on that little zone play pulls it out and has a good run but he had the ball out to the side it was winging in the air and Missouri Tiger was able to grab a hold of it and cause the second turnover Miss against Kansas. Missouri with five wide receivers Smith in that pocket throws to the far side way too high out of bounds he was throwing it over to the 6-3, Brad Eckler Eklu, but he couldn't get it. You know, for a guy that's completed over 60% of his passes, uh, Brad Smith has thrown a lot of uh, strange efforts this afternoon so far. Now he's throwing into uh, four people in the secondary and one linebacker dropping back, so he's going into a lot of coverage, perhaps being a little conservative. Second and 10, Tigers at the Jayhawk 43. No score, eight minutes to play first quarter. Smith changing the plays, operating in an empty backfield. Again, five receivers, three on the far side. There's the snap, and Smith is going to be running the ball, and here he comes. He's pulled down at the 42 by Nick Reed and company. Pressure on the quarterback from the defensive end, David, Charlton Keith. Yeah, Charlton got there first and made Brad get out of the pocket. That was the first key, almost wrapped him up, and then Nick Reed was out in a one-on-one, -on -one and Nick was able to wrap him up the Kansas defense causing third and longs themselves. So there's not much offense happening today. Of course, Missouri has not turned it over like they have. Well, it'll be third and eight. Tigers at the Kansas 41-yard line. Third and eight. Smith has the snap. He's back in the pocket. He slides out. He throws. Complete for a first down. Mark Rucker, the tight end, pulls it in at the Jayhawk 24. First down, Mizzou. Getting close to that. KU red zone now. Yeah, Kansas was in the its nickel package, and Kenneth Thompson was not where he needed to be on that, and that was where the wide open receiver, Smith made the completion. Well, Smith, who had been a little off target, was right on target with that one. First down, Tigers, and they mark it at the 23 of Kansas. Smith runs to the right. Now a shovel pass goes to Woods, the running back. He gets blasted at the 21-yard line, a gain of a couple of yards. Rodney Allen in there for KU to make the hit. Second down, Missouri. Rodney uh, had that play really well figured, but uh, that third down play just killed the Jayhawks after they had done a really good job of containing Brad Smith. And now Smith is getting down. He's just to the red zone where he's very, very effective. 
Second and seven right at the 20-yard line. And here comes a handoff to the running back, Woods, trying to get outside, and he can't turn the corner. He's hit at the 21 by the Jayhawks defensive end, Paul Como. It'll be third, and still a long seven to go for Mizzou. They lost about a half a yard there. And Kevin Kane was there as well, Max. The Kansas defense doing a great job stopping the run. Well, they're giving Missouri all these repeated long third down situations so you have to feel pretty good about the off the defense five wide receivers once again Smith has the ball looks to throw puts it up deflected incomplete knocked away by the Jayhawk secondary it was intended for Chase Kaufman over the middle to tie it in but they were able to knock it out of there well, I'm sure they'll be trying another field goal here and yep. this one's quite a bit closer than the other one was yeah but let's put things in perspective Missouri is aided by a pretty strong win out of the south they've been given two turnovers in the KU side of the field and what do they have for it two field goal attempts and at the most three points now field goal try from the 29 yard line just inside the left hash mark or cross it, the place kicker, 39-yard field goal try. He's 0 for 1 today. 3 for 4 last week. Here's the placement. The kick is up. On the way it goes, That's and good. it is good. This time, Missouri's on the board. We'll keep it right here. We'll remind you, today's game brought to you by Gatorade. First pleasure, Gatorade. It's in the Kansas Jayhawks. Is it in you? Well, Max, 5.55 to play in the opening quarter, and... Missouri's on the board first. It's three to nothing, Tigers. Well, KU's very fortunate having turned the ball over twice in its own territory to only trail by a score of three to nothing. And, uh, you know, you're, we thought Jason Swanson exhibited a lot of poise and, and stability in the game against Colorado. He hasn't shown that so far today with a questionable throw for an intercepted pass and then fumbling the ball after a good run so KU's got to stop making those mistakes if it wants to be in this game. The key here Max and Bob, Jason Swanson, what kind of memory is he going to have? He's got to forget about those mistakes. He's got to have confidence to come back out there forget about the turnovers just learn from them. Remember to get rid of the ball when you're about to be hit. Remember if you're scrambling to tuck that ball away. Don't forget about those. Have the same kind of confidence as you did coming into this game. Missouri kind of an unconventional formation on kickoffs. The kicker approaches the ball. The other 10 guys come out of a little huddle alignment. Here's the kickoff. There'll be no return. KU will start at the 20 yard line. So it's three to nothing, Missouri. We have 5.55 to play in the first quarter here, Max. And KU will have the wind, obviously, in the second quarter, but they still have almost six minutes to try to get something going here in this first period. And at Best Buy, there's a world of options. Let's find the one with your name on it Best Buy. Thousands of possibilities. Get yours. Jayhawk offense is out there. KU wearing their crimson shirts here today. Missouri in white shirts, white pants. I'm not going to be too repetitive today, but Kansas has to run the ball now. Cornish as a single back. He's to the right of the quarterback, Swanson, who's in the shotgun. And a fake handoff to Cornish. Swanson throws. Caught by Charles Gordon at the 20 and only a couple of yards. Lot is pick up on the pass play that came to the near sidelines. Jason received pressure early and had to throw the ball before Gordon was able to get down field and that's not the kind of play that you want to see completions on. You had a risk factor there and against the win and you only get about a yard and a half. Lock running with five and a half to play first period. Three to nothing Missouri. Jayhawk second and eight. Well, let's call it second and nine really at the 21. Running backs in the eye now. Swanson goes under center. And he turns. It's a draw play to Cornish. Out to the 25. Fights his way to about the 29. Close to the first down. A.J. Kincaid, the cornerback for Missouri, spins him down, David. But that was a nice run by John Cornish. Yeah, and a nice delay and a good patience by Swanson. Going back there, making a good play face. And that set it up for John. A good blocking by Johnson and Cantrell on the right side. This is very near yeah, the first down for Kansas. Max, they mark it at the 29 and a half, so it's third and less than a yard. Jayhawks out of the huddle. They need this first down. Three to nothing, Tigers here in the first quarter. Quarterback sneak. Swanson's got the first down. He's across the 30 to the 31. 
Well, the Jayhawks have the first down in a new series of plays, trailing by a field goal. Matt Thompson back in there now at offensive tackle, and he was the premier blocker on that quarterback sneak that gave KU its uh, third first down of the afternoon. Now the Jayhawks out of the huddle. They have the ball at their own 31-yard line, first and 10. 4.30 to play opening quarter. Hawks going against the wind. A one-back set. Swanson under center. Short drop. And he hands the ball to his running back, Cornish. And Cornish lugs it ahead and gets a big crowd of Tigers around him after a short gain. Uh, Brian Smith, the primary tackler, along with all the up-front guys for Mizzou. Not much of a game there. It'll be second down, KU. That was a quick draw. You know, we got all different kinds of draws and delays. That was a very quick one. And Brian Smith... Just a junior defensive man. He's great against the pass. He's a little undersized against the run, but he was able to get around the outside to make the tackle. And you remember we mentioned that uh, Missouri held Nebraska to minus two yards rushing last Saturday in that huge win over at Columbia. Gain of three yards. They marked it at the 34, so second and seven Jayhawks. Trailing three to nothing. Swanson wants to throw. The pocket collapses. Down he goes. Boy, he had a lot of guys around him as protection, but uh, Missouri broke through there. Brian Smith, Brian Smith Brian defensive end, got him. He did. He broke through all the blocking and brought Swanson down. So now KU faced with a very, very long third down. Yeah, third and about 14 after a big loss on that play. Loss of about eight yards. Smith's about as good as there is from coming around outside on the edge. Again, you want to go directly at a guy like Brian Smith and not allow him to go around you after the quarterback. Hawks go to the shotgun. Twin receivers each side. Missouri showing blitz here. Long count. Swanson's got the snap and looks. Now he's going to scramble and he'll be hit hard at the 30-yard line. Good coverage apparently by Missouri, David. Yeah, it was downfield, and so you know, they'll actually show blitz every time. And they do a good job of disguising him. Zone blitz package, they'll back out linemen, they'll bring secondary personnel. That time, they actually only brought three multi coverage in the secondary. Swanson was wise to tuck it under and go get what he could. Kyle Tucker will punt from about his own 20. Marcus Woods deep for Missouri at the Tiger 32. Three to nothing, Mizzou. 2.15 to play in the first quarter. Kyle averaging over 44. And he kicks it against the wind. A high kick. The wind stopping it. Woods asks for a fair catch, and he's got it near his own 38-yard line. Well, those high kicks that they hit that wind, they just stop, don't they? So it'll be Missouri's ball at the Tiger 38-yard line. We'll back with you next week. Dave will have the Crimson and Blue line next week at 10.30 from the hillside. Crimson and blue line, jeweled by the propane marketers of Kansas. Propane, the exceptional energy. Yeah, it's a big ball game against Nebraska, and you can call 1-800-34-HAWKS or go to KUAthletics.com for tickets. Where will you be next Saturday? Missouri with the ball. They get it wide now to Tony Temple. Temple hit and pushed out of bounds. Trying to get around the corner, but a keep to leave. And Banks Floodman would have none of that. No gain to speak of on that play for Mizzou. Kansas covering up all options for Brad Smith on that option play. They strung it out. They had a linebacker in the face of, of Brad Smith. And then linebackers going to the outside, pushing him out. Akeem Tlaib, the first there, flubbing with a follow-up. Loss of a yard, second and 11. Tigers at their own 37. Three to nothing, Missouri. Five receivers, three on the near side, including the tall freshman tight end, Chase Kaufman. Smith changing the play for Missouri. Ten on the play clock. Smith's got the snap looks now he's gonna run here he comes and slides down at the 43 yard line jerome kemp there to help him down for ku it'll be third down tigers and about five more to go well nice self-preservation for brad smith i'm sure that's what pinkle likes to see him do slide down avoid those hits kansas was coming fast smith was wise to get the five or six that he could now another one of those big third downs from missouri Three to nothing missouri they'll have the win for another 55 seconds now third and four Tigers at their own 44-yard line. Smith back. Rush put on. Pass is complete over here in the flat to Coffey, but no place to go. He's tripped up immediately by junior linebacker Eric Washington of Kansas. I have made one yard, but it's still going to be a punt for Missouri. 
Well, another good stand by the KU defenders and Eric Washington, David, a guy we haven't talked about a lot this year, a junior college transfer. And he showed a good athletic ability there. Kansas is going to use some four linebacker fronts on defense. That's because of Brad Smith. KU is able to use the blitz with Nick Reed to hurry the throw and still have a linebacker, Washington, able to make the short stop. Now the Missouri punt. Cross it standing at his own 30, awaiting the snap. Three to nothing, Tigers. Here's the punt by Missouri. A booming kick down the field. Well, that's a beauty. Gordon is going to make the catch at the five, runs to the 10, and boy, gets a buried at the 13 and pushed back. What Charles, he, he doesn't lack for courage lugging those kicks back. He was hit by Martin Rucker initially, but a lot of Mizzou players were there in a hurry. Well, that's so scary, but uh, Charles holds on to the ball as the first quarter winds down and is over. So at the end of the first period, it is Missouri three, Kansas nothing. Back for the second quarter, and KU will have the wind at its back when we return. Three to nothing, Mizzou. You're listening to Jayhawk football. Missouri leads Kansas three to nothing as we head into the second quarter, Max. Up in Lincoln, late in the first half, it is Oklahoma 21, Nebraska three. KU at its own 15-yard line, first down. Jayhawks go right to left now with the wind at their back. Swanson, play action. He's back to throw it. If he has time, he uncorks the pass, and it is tipped and almost intercepted. It's incomplete. Darnell Terrell, who had an early interception for Mizzou, got a hand on that pass, David, which was intended for Mark Simmons. Uh, Jason made the wrong read. Derek Fine was going down the field wide open, maybe by seven or eight yards. Jason needs to be able to look over the field, but he immediately looks through the sideline and makes the throw and didn't get quite enough on it. Kansas cannot afford another turnover. You got to feel good if you're a Jayhawk fan being this close, having gone against the wind, giving up two turnovers in your own side of the field, being down only 3 0. Second and 10, Kansas at the Jayhawk 15. Shotgun formation, two wideouts near side. Swanson throws underneath to the tight end, Fine, who got it at the 20, then gets manhandled by a host of Tigers who push him back. Marcus Bacon, the initial contact. Let's see if they give him the 20 yard line, Max. What do you think? That's about, yeah, it's going to be right on the 20. Jason's three out of six for the ball game right now. And uh, certainly Kansas has held Brad Smith way below what you would fear from him. He's passed for only 31 yards in the first quarter, a long way from what he's been doing in previous games. A shotgun with two running backs, McAnderson and Clark Green in there. KU needs about four yards here to hang on to the ball, throwing over the middle. Caught for a first down. Jayhawks have a first down to Charles Gordon, who takes it up near the 35. Boy, there's your big play guy. Quarterback A.J. Kincaid got him. Charles caught eight passes last week, and uh, what, a, what a great receiver he is. Tremendous hands. Good throw that time by Swanson. And had, he had, had good, good action on the ball. Great composure as well, Max. He stayed back in the pocket, and uh, Charles just curled up inside of that zone, and Jason found him. Yeah, you would love to get a drive going here. They haven't had many touchdowns the last few weeks. Finally got one at Colorado last week with Swanson throwing to Gordon. One back set, three wideouts far side, one on the near side. Swanson looks to the far side, throws over there to Gordon, and a short pickup is it as they hit him after a gain of two, maybe three yards. Again, it was Marcus Bacon, that junior strong side linebacker out of Houston. Matt Thompson in there most all the way now ever since the personal foul call on Anthony Collins, the redshirt freshman who got the start this afternoon, but the veteran Matt Thompson has seen most of the action, if not all of it, since that moment. I like Swanson's body language, Bob. After the two turnovers, it went against him. Coming back here, he shows some good confidence out there and throwing the football. Two minutes into the second quarter, three to nothing, Missouri. Clark Green in a one-back set. Swanson under center and a handoff. Clark Green and nothing there, maybe a yard. That's all. Clark Green tripped up by the nose man, Jamar Smith, out of Miami, Florida. Front there for Mizzou. It'll be third and six, Jayhawks. We hate to give up the ball. You'd like to go down at least get a field goal and get it tied. And they mark it at the 39, so third and six for the Jayhawks. Awfully close to a full house here at Memorial Stadium. Not quite, but a great crowd for this renewal of the KU Missouri rivalry. Oldest west of the Mississippi River. Three wideouts near side, one across the way. Swanson in the shotgun. He's got Clark Green to his right. 
Third and six. Swanson is back. Steps up. Has time. Throws and missed everybody. He threw that right between two KU receivers, Simmons and Brian Murph. I don't know who was the intended target, David. And neither one knew as well that Simmons uh, or, or the other receiver, neither one knew who was going to. They let the ball drop. Not a good throw. Kansas will be forced yeah. to punt. But for the first time, the defense, the KU defense, will be put in a good position back on the Missouri side of the ball. And let's let's see if what Kansas can do as for, far as forcing turnovers with a win at their back. Tucker will punt from near the KU 30. Marcus Woods deep from Missouri. There's the kick with a win behind him, a high towering kick. Woods asks for a fair catch, and with Jayhawks right in front of him, he hauls it in at the 15-yard line. Well, it's a good thing he did ask for a fair catch because I'll tell you, KU had two guys right down there ready to bust him. Time out with 12.04 to play in the half. Three to nothing, Missouri on the Jayhawk radio network. Three to nothing, Tigers. Missouri with the ball at their own 15. KU with Jamile Ashley, Tim Allen, James McClinton, and Charlton Keith up front defensively. Three to nothing, Tigers. Missouri only 39 yards of total offense. And a new quarterback in the ball game, Chase Daniel, the freshman in there for Mizzou. Daniel wants to throw, and it's tipped and incomplete off the hands of Nick Reed. Well, Brad Smith was in the game. He was just in the slot. They're using Brad Smith off time as a decoy receiver. Of course, that could always end up being a double pass, but don't be too surprised to see Chase Daniel. He's kind of been part of the game plan throughout this year. He brings a little bit different thing, a very highly touted quarterback out of the state of Texas. He can throw extremely well. He moves well, not as good as Smith. He played a lot in the Iowa State game two weeks ago. Second down for Missouri, second and 10. Daniel to the right, looks to throw it, and it is caught at the 21, and that's it. A gain of about five yards. It was thrown over here to Arnold Britt, one of the wide receivers, a senior out of St. Louis. Third down, Mizzou. Third and four for the Tigers. Banks Floodman put a hand up there. He thought maybe he was going to be able to deflect that ball, but he wasn't. Banks got up laughing. He felt good about that. He thought he was going to have a pick. Chase really let that hang just a little bit too long going into the win. That's the turnover that KU needs. Well, let's see if the young freshman can handle this loud crowd. Third and four Tigers at the Missouri 21. Three to nothing Missouri. Daniel back. Now he's going to scramble, and he pay for it. He's hit at the 18-yard line by Paul Como. Or does Paul Como more and more we're talking about uh, the young man from California, junior college transfer, and he's a, he's a pretty good pursuer. So three and out for Mizzou, and now they'll be punting from deep in their own territory, Max, and punting against the wind for the first time. Well, certainly Pinkle must have a lot of faith in Chase Daniel. You take out your senior starter that's uh, really been your mainstay and your, your main guy at 480 yards a, a year ago, and you put in this true freshman in a hostile crowd situation in a rival game. Cross it'll kick from inside the 10. Gordon at the 30 for Kansas. Three to nothing, Missouri. Here's the punt. Wobbly, end over end. It bounces. It is fielded by Gordon. He turns left and looks for a block. Runs to the 40, to the 45, and up near midfield he goes. Before Chase Coleman rides him down. A good bit of trouble running there, Max, by Mr. Charles Gordon. Well, it sure was. I'll tell you, his reverse direction got him an extra 10 yards on that. Nice return. Timeout. 10:22 to play in the half. Three to nothing, Missouri. You're listening to Jayhawk football. And we're back at Memorial Stadium. Max KU will start this possession just in Missouri territory at the 49. And the field position is slowly swinging Kansas way. They've held Missouri to three and out, three out of the last four times the Tigers have had it. Gorson's in at a tight end spot. They're going with a double tight right now. Two wide outs, one on each side, one running back. That's Clark Green, and they play it to Clark Green. He squeezes through to the 45, fighting, down close to the 40. What a run by Clark Green. Again, about nine. Striker Shulock, the defensive end, finally able to ride him down for Missouri. Looks like there wasn't any hole at all there, and somehow or other, Clark Green found daylight, picked up almost 10 yards. Nice adjustment going out with a double tight. What you do with a double tight, you get someone like Brian Smith, maybe Emu's best defensive player. You're getting further from the ball. He's got to line up outside of that tight end instead of being outside of that tackle. Nice pickup on first down. Now they go with the same offensive alignment on second and one. 
Jayhawks at the Missouri 40. They go to Clark again to the 40, 35, breaks to the 30, puts his head down, 25, and hit at the 24, and a late flag comes in. Might be a face mask. You hope it isn't a hold if you're a Kansas fan. Now the officials talk it over. It is going to be a five-yard face mask, I believe. It didn't look like a personal foul face mask, but another five yards certainly would do nothing but enhance a very good run by Clark Green. He seems to be getting in that rhythm. Clark seems to be a rhythm-type runner. He had it last year in Columbia. He looks quicker today than we've seen him in the past three weeks. Well, he had 118 yards a week a year ago for Kansas, and it is a 15-yard. They called it on the defensive end to Marcus Scott, and that'll move the ball down to the Missouri 12-yard line. First and 10, Kansas, three to nothing, Missouri. Jayhawks with the ball 12 yards away from the Tiger goal line. Jason trying to quiet down the home crowd while the offense has the ball. Swanson under center. Green's the running back. Still got the two tight ends in the game. Gordon comes in motion. Handoff. Clark Green running to the right. And down to about the 11 he goes for a pickup of a yard or so. That star defensive end, Brian Smith, got him, David. And it's all about the running the football for Kansas. That's the key. I'll say that throughout the broadcast. As Swanson now is going to be a more effective passer. When he does play action fakes, he's going to buy himself more time. The linebackers are going to be biting for that run more. Well, a couple of big plays coming up now. Second and nine from the 11. We've got Dominic Rue in the ball game right now. Along with Jeff Foster at a wideout spot. They go to four receivers, three to the left. Swanson in the shotgun. It is second down. Swanson to throw, puts it up in the flat. Gordon got it to the five, and stretching out he goes, only to the five-yard line, I think. Good pass out in the flat, and Charles ran right to the middle of the field and got it down to about the five yard line. Third and two from the five. What a big play coming up here, David Lawrence. Yes, and that was a little bit of a receiver screen or more of, of a, a screen to a slotted receiver. A quick throw to Gordon. Simmons gets one block and Gordon gets what's left of it. Yes, it is a big third down. We'll see a lot of these today, but the, the crowd now is a little bit to cheer about on the offensive side. KU third and two at the Missouri five, trailing three to nothing are the Jayhawks. Shotgun formation, Swanson, short drop. Now he's going to scramble. He runs to the three, to the one, to the goal line. Is he in? Jayhawks say touchdown. No, the officials do not. It's at the one-foot line. That was a call quarterback draw. You could see it, and Jason was patient. He waited till the offensive line got into the blocks and set it up and rode it around, but certainly a first and goal for Kansas. That's not bad inside the one-yard line. They go to two tight ends, two running backs now. Fine and Brorson are the tight ends. McAnderson in there. They also have Cullen Homolka in there as a blocker. The Steve scene. Cornish is in there. He scored six TDs. Clark no. Green's a running back. They no, line up not. in the eye at the one-foot line. First down, KU. Swanson under center. Swanson gives to McAnderson. To the goal line he goes. No. And he did not make it. Second down coming up. Just short. Kansas needs to be patient. They'll get this touchdown. They need to execute. They've not done a lot of goal line situations. You look at the pass. Fumble the ball. Don't fumble the ball. That's right, Max. They've got two tight ends, two fullbacks, and a running back. So very different look. Now they're going to sub in actually a couple of wide receivers for the fullbacks. Well, the nose of the ball almost right on that goal line. Missouri making numerous substitutions. Hawks come out of the huddle. Second and goal from the one foot line. Three to nothing, Missouri. Swanson, quarterback sneak, straight ahead. And uh, does he have short. it or not? He's, He's going to be short. And the problem is, Jason, he didn't get the ball forward enough to be credited. The Lions judge looked at the ball and where Jason had the ball, he could have reached out. Of course, if you reach out, you risk getting a fumble. But actually, it may actually be uh, 10 inches back further than it was on the previous play. Kansas is going to bring in the two fullbacks now. Homolka and McAnderson both in the game. Homolka, the senior out of Claflin and Hollywood, went to Claflin High School. Brandon McAnderson, the former Lawrence Lion. These six inches have been hard to hard to achieve. Third down, goal to go. And off, given to Clark Green, left guard, touchdown. Hawks take the lead. 
Well, McAnderson did a great job of paving the way and a good job by the left side of the offensive line. He was in there easy for a very, very big Kansas touchdown. And they are waving the lead here at Memorial Stadium. Kansas takes the lead with 6.05 to play in the half. Mark Green's second TD of the year, and he had a great part to the success of that drive. Boy, great field position got him going. A 49-yard touchdown drive. Now Webb for the point after. It's blocked. The kick is blocked, and uh, it'll remain a three-point ball game. Oh, boy. What a big play that is for Missouri. So a timeout now here in Lawrence, 6.05 to play in the first half. Kansas 6, Missouri 3 on the Jayhawk Network. I knew it. Lead 6-3, just over six minutes to play in the half. Kansas will kick off right to left. John Webb, who had that point after blocked a moment ago, will be kicking it deep. Tony Temple just inside the end zone for Missouri. Webb has the wind behind him, so a chance to kick it out of the ballpark. Green, who had over 100 yards a year ago, now has 48 yards carrying the ball as Kansas did establish some sort of a running game, which was so important. Here's the KU kickoff. Line drive down the field, but into the end zone it goes, and no return. Let's remind you that Kansas women's basketball team is getting ready to start the new season, and you can reserve your seat at Allen Fieldhouse by calling 800-34-HAWKS or log on to KUAthletics.com. Kansas women's basketball, they say, let's play, and it's Bonnie Ball again this year, Max. It's going to be an exciting time for both the men and the women on the new floor at Allen Fieldhouse. Missouri's football at the Tiger 20-yard line. Brad Smith back at quarterback now. Five receivers, an empty backfield, three wideouts on the near side. Six to three, Kansas. Smith in the gun, has the snap. He's going to try to run it, and he's going to hit, be hit and pushed back. He didn't reach the 20-yard line as Jermile Ashley is in that crease right there. David, uh, Brad Smith couldn't find an open alley, could he? Yeah, he tried to call some audibles, and I'm sure it's a little more different situation for Missouri. They played a couple of home games. They played it to Stillwater. They probably didn't have as big a crowd down there as they used to because of, of the way the football team has been playing. So I think the crowd's bothering the signals as he gets them from the sideline and gives them out. But that was just a quarterback sweep that the defensive line was up to and then made a push back. They gave him close to the 20, so let's call it second and 10. Smith rolls out, pitches back to his running back, who jumped to the ball, but he hangs on. Franklin with the ball, and he is nailed behind the line of scrimmage. He had to worry too much about holding on to the football oh. instead of turning up field. And field. Again, KU's defense doing a terrific job. Leo Baines got him, and that was almost a Missouri turnover. Now third and 13. David, you'd love to get a three and out right here. And a turnover, I'd take that as well, but Kansas not getting penetration on, on these option plays. They want to string it out, string it out. Don't get Brad Smith any free looks downfield. The cornerbacks are doing a good job coming up for the pitch. Smith's got the ball. He steps back. He surveys the field. Now he wants to run with it. He scrambles out to the left, looks to throw, floats it up the field. He's got a man. It's incomplete. And a flag comes in. We may have pass interference. Martin Rucker was the intended receiver. Kenneth Thompson has to turn around. He was looking at the receiver the whole time, and he's got to get turned around and look oh, at the football. It'd be an easy pass interference call against Kansas. That's tragic because uh, they had Brad Smith way, way back. He didn't know what to do with the football. He finally got rid of it, and, and if Kenneth Thompson is called for pass interference, that'll give Missouri an automatic first down. Well, it gives Missouri a big first down on third and about 13. Now, Kenneth's got to position his body so he can see that receiver, but also be able to know and have a recognition of where that ball is and what's going on in the rest of the field. Yeah, the defender has just as much right to the ball as the offensive player, but as you said, you've got to be looking at the ball, not with your back to the pass. So first down, Missouri, they'll spot it at the Tiger 33. 435 to play in the half, 6-3 Kansas. Now five receivers once again. Smith back, lone man back there in that backfield. Now he moves up on the line of scrimmage. Now he backs up again. Down to 10 on the play clock. They send a receiver in motion 
who now lines up in the backfield. Here comes Smith to his right. Now backpedals, goes out to the left, looks to throw it. Long pass, way overthrown and out of bounds. He was going to the 6'7 freshman receiver, Chase Kaufman, but Charlton Keith and Paul Como, David, were bearing down on that quarterback. Yeah, that was an option to the drop back pass, and uh, Kansas was able to get pressure just with three men up front, and of course, when you only rush three, you're gonna have max protection in the backfield, and Smith throws that ball pretty high against the wall. It went out of bounds, but had it not, you know, those balls don't have a lot on them going into the wing. Kansas might be able to get a pick on one of those. Second and 10, Smith's gonna run a draw play. And he is hit. No, he gets away to the 40 and close to a first down. Boy, that is the danger of Brad Smith right there. Charlton Keith eventually arrested him, but now Missouri, great field position out close to midfield and Max another first down. Now that's about the first time today that Brad Smith has shown signs of threatening to break into the open. And when he does that, boy, he is tough to break down. KU's had two turnovers today. Missouri has not had one. And they've got the ball first down at their own 43. KU leading by three points. Here is that inside handoff given to one of the running backs, Jimmy Jackson. Jackson into KU territory, the red shirt freshman. Jimmy Jackson hit by Jerome Kemp, a gain of about eight. Jimmy from Carruthersville, Missouri. Uh, not used all that often by the Tigers, but a pretty good run there by him. He plays behind Marcus Woods and Tony Temple at that spot. At the half, Oklahoma 21, Nebraska 3 up in Lincoln. We're nearing halftime here, 3.40 to go. But Missouri second and two at the Kansas 48 right now. Big opportunity for the Tigers to try to regain the lead before halftime. Smith getting the audible call, the call from the sideline now giving two on the play clock as they get it underway. And an inside handoff and a big run up the middle by Marcus Woods. First down inside the KU 40 to the 38 where he's hit by Nick Reed and they're getting this field spread out a little bit, David, and finding some alley room up the middle. Yeah, and then so far, that's the last drive at least, the Missouri coaching staff did a good job of being able to get Missouri offense in a situation where it has success. These inside zone handoffs, two in a row. Nice plays by Missouri. Tigers get another first down. They started this drive at their own 20. Smith looking over at the Tiger bench. He's got a running back with him. Now Smith, it looked like he was going to call a timeout, but now he's changing the play. Now they do ask for a timeout with two on the play clock. Missouri was one for seven on third down conversions until they made that last one. 2.57 to play in the half. 6-3 to three, Kansas on the Jayhawk Network. 6-3 to three, Kansas. Missouri has a first down at the Jayhawk 38, moving left to right. And Chase Daniels in the game now at quarterback. Smith's in the slot, isn't he, over on the far side? He, he is. is. They could use him in motion to do a multitude of things, like run or throw. Here he's going now in Here he motion. comes in motion to the backfield, and they hand it to Smith on a sweep, and he is hit hard at the 35, a gain of three yards, and tackle made by Rodney Fowler of Kansas. The clock running, Max, 2.45 to play in the half. KU trying to hang on to this three-point lead. David, in a game like this, with KU's defense assigned one player to be with Brad Smith all the time, or that's not feasible, is it? No, usually it might be more the middle linebacker. Other than that, no, it depends on what, where he's at, what side of the field, and what type of situation, whether a nickel or or what kind of front we're in. Smith's back at quarterback now. He looks to the Missouri coaches over there. They got four guys going through signs. There's the snap. Smith is back. Now here he comes as a runner. And to the 30, a flag is down. Another flag is down. Smith knocked out of bounds by Nick Reed. But let's check the penalties. The referee threw one. And uh, let's see if it might be holding on Mizzou. Jayhawks think it is. Nick Reed thinks he was the guy that was, was held as he points the other direction. And here's the referee, Mr. Walker, here to eventually tell us about it. In Missouri, trailing here. Here's the referee. It is holding on the Tigers. North Carolina is improving their football program. They lead Miami at the half in Miami, 16 to 7. Holding was on the little running back out of Rockers, Tony Temple. Now oh, that's 25 yards against Tony Temple, isn't it? And he had the personal. Yeah, play. he did. And it was against Nick Reed. Nick, uh, it would be very difficult for a young sophomore like Temple, not very big, to block. It's going to 
Kurt Missouri. They've had some momentum with some nice running plays. Second and 15 at the Jayhawk 43. Smith to the left. Looks to throw it. Now scrambles, and he stumbles. He just throws it away over on the track. Booger threw it into the KU band. A good Char pressure by Charlton Keith yeah. along with Mr. Kevin Kane. Yeah, Charlton Keith almost had him, but didn't produce enough pressure to run Brad Smith backwards. So now the Tigers still trailing. They're faced with a tough situation again. 204 to play in the half, David. Tremendous pressure by the Kansas defense. The linebackers got in there. Kevin Kane leading the way. Now this crowd needs to do their part. Make everyone realize. This team is back in town. It's been a long ways, a long time coming, but let's put some pressure on Smith and hear the noise. And Smith back to throws a high snap, but he pulled it down. He throws over the middle, incomplete. We're trying to get it to the 6'7 freshman, Chase Poppin. Fourth down, Tigers. Now, what do they do? They're against the wind. Uh, this would be a mammoth field goal try. No, you can't even go there. You've got to punt it or, or run a play. I believe they'll punt and try to get Kansas offense yeah, back here inside comes the point. Cross it, who is the place kicker and punter. He'll be a punter this time. Brandon Perkins had a hand on that last pass, uh, but couldn't quite bring it under control. But Missouri going to kick the ball. Okay, you'll have it. With one last opportunity. Gordon standing inside the 10. A minute 58 to play before halftime. Axel talked to Nolan Cromwell at the intermission. There's the snap. Crossett steps into it. A high kick. Charles, is he going to catch it? Yeah, he asked for a fair catch. Now he lets it go. And Missouri will down it around the six-yard line. The KU may seven, be happy four, to run out the clock right here, David. What do you think? Yeah, you may run a couple of plays if you have success early. Use your timeouts, Kansas. As all three of them say, but uh, I doubt they go in stopping the clock with uh, with passes. Maybe a safe pass, a screen play, or a draw. Well, a minute 49 to play in the in the first half. Kansas leading Missouri six to three at this point. Well, in spite of both these teams having great defenses I think we anticipated uh, a little more scoring than six to three in the first half of this game Swanson under center one running back that would be Mr. would be Clark Green who scored the KU touchdown and at 49 to go handoff Clark Green running uh, behind the left guard Bob Whitaker and a gain of a couple of yards gets that clock moving now a minute 40 to play Missouri has two timeouts remaining is Jamar Smith the nose man made the stop well that doesn't look like either team is going to move to use the timeouts in Kansas unless they do something here it's like they're just going to run out the clock and be satisfied with the 6-3 lead going into half and you have to feel good about that if you're Kansas look at the turnover situation yeah. how it favors Missouri and this Kansas defense are doing it again and I think Swanson, I'm kind of happy about the way he's come back from those turnovers. Minute 15, now down to a minute 10 to play in the half. Swanson under center. Second down and eight. And it is a handoff. Fate. Swanson keeps rolling right and up to the 15 and to the 16 yard line. He faked first to Clark Green, then he faked an end around to Gordon. And he was finally hit over on the far side by Brian Smith. And now 50 seconds to play in the half. They almost got a first down. It'll be third and one. Yeah, you're right. He had two very excellent fakes. Kept the ball himself. Took off for the east sideline and made good yardage on the play. But it's relatively insignificant now with 35 seconds left in the half. They may just run one more play. Well, you had Mark Simmons running a quarter route, corner route, but... Uh, I like a, a little more risque play calling there. That's nice to have a chance to get it downfield. Now third and one. Now 18 seconds to play, and they hand it to Clark Green. Clark Green's got a first down, and that's how the half's going to end. Time will expire, and now down to 11 seconds as they move the chain over on the far side. But KU heads to the locker room with a three-point lead. They've not started the clock. Now it begins to roll. And KU will not run another play, apparently. Down to four seconds, two seconds. It is halftime here in Lawrence. Halftime score, Kansas six, Missouri three. We'll be back. You're listening to Jayhawk football. Back at Memorial Stadium, the Jayhawks kick off to start the second half, enjoying a very precarious 6-3 to three lead. And again, here's Bob Davis. KU kicks off into the wind, and the wind stops the kick. Temple at the 10, makes the catch, 
up to the 20 he goes and he's decked at the 21 so interesting decision Brian McAnderson made the tackle David you're on the sideline KU kicking off Missouri got the ball but they also have the win the Tigers in this third quarter and they only have field position at what to the 21 yard line so that was a pretty big play for the special teams for University of Kansas kicking off into the wind again you're giving it to the ball and the wind of Missouri and of course the trade-off Kansas will have it in the fourth quarter so from the shotgun Brad Smith looks over to the Missouri sideline now he comes up to the line of scrimmage now he backs up again three receivers far side six to three the score KU with the lead Smith's going to run it and he's up to about the 24 and pulled back by several Tigers most of several Jayhawks I should say most notably Max James McClinton you know an amazing thing about the first half Missouri's rushing total 38 yards and that's almost exactly what Kansas is averaging per half they're number two in the nation against the rush Missouri did no better second and seven Tigers at their own 24 opening minute of the third quarter six to three Jayhawks Smith walking back and forth now he's in the shotgun there's the snap back to the senior QB he throws over the middle and it's caught for a first down up to the 42 yard line the sophomore from St. Joseph Martin Rucker good strike thrown by Brad Smith the tackle by Rodney Fowler now Missouri with a little operating room and that wind at their back six out of 14 for the ball game now for Brad Smith the Tigers senior signal caller Tigers trying to win their conference game for the fourth time in a row they've never done that in the Big 12 Smith's the first down at the Tiger 43 yard line they've got the wind behind them going right to left Smith with the ball he goes left now turns oh, right left and a pass going down the field they got a man down there and it's overthrown and incomplete but is there a flag anywhere looked like a block in the back up here should have been a block in the back but nobody called it or the referee standing right there and the booze raining down here well Bob the free blocking zone extends three yards each side of the line of scrimmage clearly was it Jamal Ashley back there was not in that free blocking zone and it appeared to most people at Memorial Stadium he was hit in the back and no call on that so it's second and ten Missouri as we go back to work Tigers at their 43 so a big no call perhaps right there six to three Kansas here is Smith he wants to run it and he is across the 45 and to the 47 and then a big pile up and Smith never did actually go down but he stopped after a gain of about four yards he got out of Kevin Kane's grasp and that's something that doesn't happen often but Kevin recovered and came back to help on the gang tackle another big third down for the Tigers that's been less than successful one out of eight Missouri, third and five Missouri yet to give up a turnover and Kansas defenders as soon as Smith is in the grass are reaching in and trying to pry that ball free they're at the 48 of the Tigers Missouri with the ball third and five after the run by Brad Smith seven on the play clock Smith with the snap from the shotgun now here he runs out to the right he is scrambling he is hit and spun down by Nick Reed and Jerome Kemp a gain of only a yard it'll be fourth down and Smith took a shot he's over there on his knees he's like a boxer who got a hit in the jaw and he went to his knee you know Jerome Kemp's not very big David 5'9 a little over 200 pounds but he delivers a wallop he certainly did and Brad's gonna have to go over there and, and take a seat and they'll have to check him out but the Kansas defense after one pass plays what they gave up on that series it's just very difficult to go 80 yards against this defense now cross it'll punt standing at his own 35 Charles Gordon inside the 10 for Kansas to return it kick with a win and this is going to reach the end zone I think yeah, yes it will oh, it hits the official and then goes in the official standing at the two yard line had the ball hit him well you'd be mad if, if oh, that ball would have died on the one would you ever that's right that would have been uh, KU's ball at the one yard line had that not rolled in the official part of the playing surface that was the back judge Mark Johnson who got hit by that ball wow but it goes as a touchback so that's good news for Kansas the Jayhawks will have it at their own 20 KU leading six to three and now fellas a big possession here against that wind and KU has 
David said we'll have the wind in the fourth quarter, so they need to keep the ship afloat here against the wind in the third period. They go to the shotgun here on first, first down. It's a handoff to Clark Green, trying to go right into the teeth of that Missouri defense. He gets about three yards and hit by the nose guard, Jamar Smith. How about that decision, David? Now, obviously, they know the forecast today, but you are gambling that the wind will not let up in that fourth quarter, aren't you? Well, and you're also no confidence in your defense that even though you're kicking off and giving the ball with the wind that they're going to be able to stop them which Kansas did you know KU had success with those two tight ends in that key drive uh, I, I expect to see some of that two tight end set we've yet to see a tight end in these first two plays but expect to see him come back in second and seven Hawks at their own 23 leading by three points here's a delay given to Clark Green and he's Struggles across the 25 to the 26. Marcus Bacon, the linebacker, got him. It'll bring up third and four for Kansas. You know, Mark Simmons has caught at least one pass in 31 games in a row. He leads the Jayhawks. He doesn't have one yet today. Well. Okay, you can't give up a turnover. That's what happened in the first half. We got third and a four, so it's not a, a, a real difficult situation to make. Pass or run. Early on, third quarter, six to three, Kansas. Third and four from the shotgun. Swanson throws it. It's caught. Brian Murph, a first down at the 35, and he falls forward to the 36. Well thrown from Swanson to Brian Murph, who, by the way, is a Missouri guy out of Howardville, Missouri, who came to KU by way of Butler County. You know, Swanson had to shake off those first two turnovers that were directly attributable to him. And uh, with fingers crossed, it appears that he may have done that. He seems to be more confident now. He, he's throwing the ball better, and KU developing a little bit of a ground game. And now KU goes to the double tight end with two receivers, and it's a delay to the running back, who's John Cornish right now. He's hit by middle linebacker Diedrich Harrington of Missouri. Not much of a gain there. We're at 10-20 to play in the third quarter. Kansas leading Missouri 6-3 to in the Jayhawks. We'll have second down and nine. Now the officials all getting together. Was there a penalty? Offsides, Missouri. I didn't see the flag. That's there it a free is. Five. On the far side. And uh, Max, your point is well taken. I thought, I think I mentioned Offensive something ball. early in the broadcast that I thought a key nine, to this nine, game was Swanson nine, having a short nine. memory and coming back <laughs> and get those turnovers in the back of his mind. And I think he's done a very good job with that. You know, here's a guy that didn't have much experience and he came in with a little confidence in Boulder, and he's showing that same type of confidence here today. Boy, don't you like first and five? That's what KU has now just across the 40. Brian Smith, the defensive end, was the guilty party for Missouri. First and five, Kansas. Trying to add to their three-point lead. Swanson now goes up under center. First down play. He's got a running back. That's Cornish. And they play it to John, and John forward for maybe a yard to the 30, uh, to the 42-yard line. Jason Simpson, the free safety came knifing in there. Well, that was a safety blitz by Simpson, who really played it well, and now he goes running off, carrying his left arm a little, uh, as if it might, he might have injured it on that play, but he really broke in there that time and, and uh, ruined that play. He did, and he is in some pain, Max, and he's a key player to these Missouri Tigers, one of the best players on their team, certainly on the defensive side. He's one of their captains. Second and three for the Jayhawks. At the Kansas 42-yard line. Swanson under center, short drop, throws. It's caught for the tight end, Derek Fine. I don't know that he had the first down yardage. He was hit at about the 45 and then pushed back. They needed the 46-yard line It's very, very for the close. first down. It's going to be marked on about the 45 and a half. All right. Fine's limping as he gets up. I think he's going to have to come out as well. It's going to be a, a third and short. Swanson doing a good job of taking these short drops and sitting in the pocket and firing quickly before the Tigers can get to him. But uh, Derek Fine is coming off. He's having some problems in the lower leg area. That'll hurt to use uh, passing options. The other tight end, Russell Brorson, while a good blocker, has not uh, been a pass catcher so far this year. Now they're going to measure and see if they have the first down. They've got it. They measure, and it's a first down. And Well, that's, shall we say, music to your ears. It's brought to you by SBC Blue Room in the Blue Room. You can check out all things music, and while you're there, sign up for high-speed SBC Yahoo DSL. Go to blueroom.sbc.com. Bob drives like this to a couple of things. Obviously, you're 
if you can get in scoring position against the win and what's obviously going to be a low scoring game after big plus but it also takes time off the clock and it's going to limit the amount of possessions that Missouri will get in the second half. Well, a big spot there and a big first down for Kansas just across their own 45. Missouri's got a lot of guys up on the line of scrimmage. Swanson, a quarterback draw and slicing out across the 45 near the 48 yard line where he's dropped by Marcus Bacon. Simpson came right back in for Missouri, so he's okay. He was chasing Swanson on that play. I think Simpson ha had a stinger in his neck and shoulder, Aaron, and Derek Klein appears to be getting retaped in the ankle area, so we're hoping to see the same thing from our young tight end getting back in the game. You know is. about stingers, don't you, David? Yeah, they don't feel very good, but uh, you can get back in and play after a couple of minutes. It's a gain of a couple. Second and eight Jayhawks, the Kansas 48. Moving left to right against the wind and the Tiger defense. From the shotgun, it's a fake handoff, a pass play over the middle, intercepted. They're trying to go to Charles Gordon. It's picked off by Missouri at the Missouri 34. Boy, I wish he would have handed the ball off that time. That would have been a big gainer, I think. Brock Christopher in at middle linebacker got the pick. Well, so the KU's third turnover of the day. Well, Jason... Uh, Miss Red was the depth that the linebacker was getting from Missouri. He got a good pass drop back there and didn't realize how deep that linebacker was getting. It was open over the top, uh, but it was just underthrown in the in that zone coverage. Good drop by the Missouri linebacker. So Missouri gets it back at their own 34, six to three, Kansas. 8:14 to play in the third. Smith back to throw. He's got time throwing underneath. What a catch! As a flag is thrown, it's caught by the freshman Chase Kaufman who is 6'7", and used all that height to make the play. And it might, could be interference on Kansas, Might Max. be on Kevin Kane, yeah. Coffin made the catch anyway. It is interference, KU. End of the third quarter at Lincoln, Oklahoma 24, Nebraska 10. Well, a good drive by Kansas. That's exactly what, what I'm sure Mark Mangino and Nick Quatero were talking about at halftime, but followed up by that interception by Swanson when he underthrew in that zone coverage, the post pattern, putting this defense back out here. This defense has just been excellent, but we have to keep them off the field a little bit more than we did in that first half. I tell you, when your turnover to takeaway ratio is three to zero, yeah. it's yeah. hard to win a football yeah. game. Yeah, you gotta turn that around. You can't, you can't get that get any deeper. First down, Missouri. Tigers at their own 44, and as the play develops, a flag is dropped. Illegal procedure, Missouri. The umpire came running in with that call. It's eight minutes to play third quarter here in Lawrence. The pass interference on Kane, of course, gave Missouri an automatic first down. So now it's going to be first and 15 back on the Tiger 39-yard line. Still field position plus to KU. They've got to maintain that. Six to three, Kansas. Tigers now at their own 39, first and 15. Smith fakes a handoff. He's back to throw, puts it up, and it is broken up, almost picked off. Heck of a play by Akeem Tlaib to reach around the receiver. Now that time, that was a good example of what we've been talking about, David. Tlaib was looking to the passer and broke on the ball and kept his head facing the right direction. One of the keys in, in, in what's happened recently, being able to use Gordon on offense is only because of Tlaib and Baines doing a good job at the corner position. And you're right, Max, couldn't have been defended any better by Keith. Now second and 15, Smith wants to throw again. Now he scrambles to the right, stops, pumps, throws long down the side, overthrew his man incomplete. Trying to get it to Sean Coffey, the veteran from East Cleveland, Ohio, and Tlaib down there with him defending. And just to follow up, Max, what we were talking about, Tlaib looking back at the ball. Smith got a lot of air under it, and of course, misjudged the 15 mile an hour wind at the back. It's gonna set up another third long. You know, I was talking to veteran Missouri coach and broadcaster John Cadillac. The first thing he told me is that he didn't think more than, he didn't think two touchdowns would be scored in the second half, and he said, your defense is better than Texas, and they've seen Texas. Wow. Third and 15, Tigers. Smith looks to the Tigers' sideline. 10 on the play clock, down to seven. Smith backs up, five on the play clock. Smith calling the play, he's got the snap. Back to throw, a rush put on. Smith scrambles out, looks to throw it, puts it up, and it is out of bounds, incomplete. It was going to Chase Kaufman. Rodney Fowler was with him, and the ball on the boundary, incomplete. I guess any uh, doubts we had about 
Brad Smith being able to throw the long ball or dissipated on that previous one when he threw it about 50 yards down the field. Oh, he could throw the long ball, but he's not a precision passer. He's not the kind of guy who's going to stand back in the pocket and make great passes and, and beat you. He's the kind of guy that can mix the run with the pass and beat you that way. Kansas simply making Brad do it via the airways. So Missouri will punt. Good job of the KU defense. Cross at the punter, has the snap, he steps in, he kicks it at the 30-yard line, and Charles Gordon is going to make the catch. No fair catch, and he's hit immediately at the 11. Boy, Charles showing all that courage again. He was hit by Jarrell Humphrey. We've got a timeout here in Lawrence. 17 to go in the third quarter. Kansas 6, Missouri 3 on the Jayhawk Network. 7-17 to play in the third quarter. 6-3 Jayhawks. Let's squeeze in 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to Jayhawk football. Well, the Jayhawks have the ball at their own 11-yard line. First down at that point. So a long field here for Kansas, but they stopped Missouri after the turnover. Here's a bad snap, but Swanson picked it up, handed it to the running back, and Clark Green got to the line, maybe the line of scrimmage, maybe lost a yard, but KU does keep the ball after that. It's second and 11, Max. Awfully close there once again. You know, both of these teams have given up a lot of touchdown passes this year, but we haven't even come close to having seen one today. Well, the, I think the mishandled snap was uh, did cause the bad rush for Kansas you know this bad field position is a result of a the win and b another turnover the third turnover of the game going into the win wants an under center now on second and 11 here's a pass play to Murph and he couldn't catch it it comes out of there incomplete pass he had three Tigers around him including the cornerback Marcus King Tell you, the Tigers defensive backs are pretty doggone good yeah they've got some veterans there with King and Kincaid are the senior Simpson's a senior and, and David Overstreet whose dad you know played at Oklahoma Overstreet a converted quarterback he's yeah. come in and done a great job and Murph that was a catchable ball he was in traffic and of course you don't want that ball bobbling around out there you got to catch that football Kansas cannot continually give the ball back to Missouri certainly today well if they don't get 11 yards on this play they'll be punting from their own goal line third and 11 at the 10 Swanson keeps not much there out to about the 14 where he's dropped by the linebacker Marcus Bacon and here comes the kicking team with Kyle Tucker and company a conservative call certainly by Mangino and Quatero but I think what you you're looking at is, is uh, get three or four yards punt the ball away let your defense play this three six thirteen left in the third quarter and ride out the win in that second and in the fourth quarter to get a victory and Hope this defense continues to play like it is. Big kick here for Tucker against the win. Marcus Woods at midfield for Missouri. They figure to get great field position. There's the snap and the kick. Pretty good kick, but the wind will hold it up. Woods asks for a fair catch with his back to the Jayhawk defenders. He makes the catch. Great punt into what the kick. win by Tucker. You know, Tucker has the third best punting average of all time for KU and so he's done a terrific job and that was a good one right there. Time out on the field, 5.50 to go in the third, Kansas 6, Missouri 3. You're listening to Jayhawk football. Well, Missouri takes over at its own 38-yard line. 6-3 to three, Kansas, 5.50 to play in the third. And a handoff given to Marcus Woods, trying to get outside. Flag is down. That's a hold. Wood is ridden out of bounds at about the 43, but they'll probably bring it back. They're holding Rodney Allen, the left defensive end for Kansas, and that's another sign that you have a great defense. You see some of those holding calls, particularly after a running back like Woods on that carry had success. And while they step out and off, Oklahoma and Nebraska now. Nebraska scored. Oklahoma leads. 24-17, just underway in the fourth quarter. Ohio State has jumped out over Minnesota, 45-24 to in the early fourth quarter. And the last we heard, Colorado led Kansas State 7-3. And how valuable is Rodney Allen, a guy that can play inside and outside, give you depth at both of those positions? First and 20 for Missouri at the Tiger 28. KU three turnovers. Missouri has not coughed it up so far today. 
Brad Smith runs right, pitches back to his trailing back, who's hit at the 20 of uh, the 33 yard line. That is Marcus Woods. It'll bring up second and about 15. In there for KU defensively, Akib Talib. A lot of people are going to wonder how can Kansas continually defend Brad Smith's offense with this much success. First of all, Kansas is very good. Secondly, they're being very patient. Again, the whole key is to mirror Brad Smith as he goes down the line of scrimmage. Keep those linebackers at bay. Use the front three, front four to get the pressure and the secondary. Keep them back for all the passes. Second and 15, Tigers. Smith drops straight back. Rush put on. He's hit. Down he goes. Charlton Keith wrapped him up inside the 20. There's another big tackle for loss by the Jayhawks, who are ranking high nationally in that category and a big, beautiful play now, by Charlton Keith. David, those guys go way back. Brad Smith's from Youngstown, Ohio. Charlton Keith from Akron. And you know, one of the most difficult things in, in this football game is to tackle Brad Smith in space. Keith has to defend off of the offensive tackle and tackle the big Brad Smith in space for that big sack. Third and 28. Tigers at their own 20. Smith is back. He's got time. Throws over the middle. Incomplete. Missouri will have to kick it. Smith's going into negative yardage rushing now for the afternoon after that sack. Uh, and the crowd is letting him hear the ovation and gratitude for that incredible effort that they've shown really throughout the uh, Big 12 portion of the schedule in 2005, but particularly here today. Now let's see if a Charles Gordon punt return might be coming up. Pick the kick with a wind at the back of the putter, Adam Crossett. He'll kick from the Missouri 10-yard line. In four and a half more minutes, KU will have the win. KU leading six to three here in late in the third quarter. Crossett awaiting the snap. There it is. He steps into the kick. And a kick headed to the far sideline. And down the sideline it goes, out of bounds. Let's see where at the KU 30. Today's attendance. 48,238. And we've got a timeout. 4.15 to play, third period. Kansas, six. Missouri, three on the Jayhawk radio. Now, 4.15, Max, to play in the third quarter. As you mentioned, KU will have the wind in the fourth quarter. You'd like to see about a four-minute drive right here, wouldn't you? Well, you would, and uh, KU's been more stable. They still have made those critical mistakes, but uh, they've developed a little bit of a running game, and... Uh, Swanson's, for the most part, done an adequate job. Swanson out of the shotgun is hit as he tried to elude a defender, but he's dropped back at the 25, a loss of five yards. And he had some initial protection, and Missouri brought, looks like, uh, seven or eight on that particular play. And Swanson, if he identified that a little bit earlier, he had some open receivers, one being Charles Gordon, who was on this far sideline by Kansas. It was the, the defensive end, Brian Smith, and his tackle right next to him, Lorenzo Williams, who got Swanson. So now KU faced with second and 15 against the wind here at their own 25, leading 6-3 to three are the Jayhawks. 3.35 to play in the third quarter. Swanson goes under center now. Missouri shows blitz, toss play, outside goes Cornish, up to the 40, and a first down up near midfield. They got Cornish to the outside for the big gainer. Well, there's John's best run of the ball game. Boy, I'll say that was 25 beautiful. yards. Hey, how about Cesar Rodriguez over there giving Cornish the corner to get to, and then John turns on the speed, and that was maybe the biggest offensive play of the game for Kansas. Jason Simpson very close to tackling out of bounds on that play. It was awfully close. He was running hard. So was Cornish. They mark it at the Kansas 49. Well, if Kansas can get any type of score going into the win and then have the win in the fourth quarter, that would sure be a big momentum up for KU. Well, the Jayhawks got a big first down on a long yardage play. They go back to the shotgun. Here is Swanson throwing in the flat to Gordon. Makes one man miss. Got inside the 50 and down close to the Missouri 46-yard line. He put a pretty good move on the first defender. Yeah, that was Dedrick Harrington and a nice little step there by Charles got away from Dedrick. Demarcus Scott eventually tripped him up. Now they mark it actually at the 47. And the only thing inaccurate about that, Bob, I, I would disagree with pretty good. That was a great move. And so quick down here on the field that he's able to do that to a pretty 
talented linebacker in Harrington. You know, yeah. he's not a tackle. He's a pretty fast linebacker. As it is, it's a gain of four. So second and six. 6-3 six, KU leading here. Late in the third quarter. Toss play to Cornish. Running right to the 45. Flag is thrown by the field judge. And Cornish tackled inside the 40. What did the field judge see? Holding. Are they going to get Brian Murph on that one? Yep, holding against Kansas. That's too bad because a critical mistake right there after another good run. And you keep wondering, are they going to even throw the ball to Mark Simmons today? Well, certainly that's not a priority in this football game. If Kansas can run the football, they should run the football every play. But the more you establish the run, then Swanson's play action passes will lock those linebackers in and they'll have more open receivers downfield and be able to see downfield. But the holding call really puts a situation you don't want. It's a more predictable Kansas needs to pass situation. Well, although in a passing down a moment ago, they got the big run to the outside by uh, Cornish. They kind of they caught Missouri in a blitz that time. Now let's see what they do on second and 16. Jayhawks back at their own 43 now. 2.20 to play in this third quarter. KU has the wind in the fourth. Missouri again showing blitz. Swanson comes up to the line of scrimmage now, and he calls timeout. His play clock was running out. So a timeout for the Jayhawks. We'll take it. Well, let's keep it right here. Let's remind you that we want to welcome our fans around the world who check us out on line through SBC Jayhawk Total Access, the best high-speed Internet access on the market today. Use SBC Yahoo DSL. Max, KU nursing this 6-3 to three lead here late in the third. Boy, it's a real struggle, and you're starting to think that one huge play or one long drive might determine the outcome of this game. KU trying to win its third straight victory over the Mizzou Tigers on the football field. And, you know, the stat that we said throughout the broadcast, and we should repeat it here now, the key to this game, Kansas giving Missouri three turnovers, in their own, actually, I don't know if the third one was on their own side of the field, but they were all into the wind. So Missouri has short fields with the win at their back. They come away with a total of three points. Yeah, they haven't even uh, had a chance to come close to a score since those two field goal tries, one of which was successful. The KU Medical Center now is helping more than 37 Kansas communities recruit doctors and other health professionals. For more details, here's a number to call, 888-503-4221. KU serves Kansas. Second down, 16 Kansas at the Jayhawks 43. They've got to get down to the Tiger 41 for a first down. They've got this play and one more to try to accomplish that. Swanson in the shotgun, back pedals, looks to throw, puts it up in the flat, caught by McAnderson to the 50, and Brandon to the 45. Well, they got a big chunk of it, about 10 yards on that play, and how many passes has Brandon McAnderson caught in his career? That's his second. Uh-huh. <laughs> Not many. Not and he's, too many. He certainly does have hands, can catch the ball out of the backfield, so it's a nice weapon to bring out as Kansas came out in, in two back set. And Swanson giving a very accurate throw to Brandon McAnderson. Well, that sets up a huge third, uh, third down play, third and five. Minute 40 to play. Clock running in the third quarter. Boy, get a first down here and you're in great shape. KU leads 6 3. Shotgun formation once again. Swanson drops back. Throw. Now he can't throw his sack. Tried to get the pass underway, but Missouri came storming in there, and they get him with Brian Smith. And Dedrick Harrington was in there, too. Boy, I tell you, those guys are tough. Yeah, Brian Smith is one of the best outside rushers there is in the conference. And, of course, they have the blitz on as well. They didn't, they didn't give Nebraska much time either. Okay, you will have to punt Charles Gordon up and limping off the field, and he's met by the medical staff as he comes to the sideline. Yeah, he's in some considerable pain right now, and he's grabbing his left ankle. Inside a minute to play third quarter. Tucker into punt now after KU lost yardage there on the sack. Tucker hangs it up into the air oh, against the wind. the wind. Catch that one. Boy, I'll say. Oh, oh it takes a Missouri it. bounce. The Hawks will have to down it at the Missouri 32. Boy, the wind is a huge factor, and the Tigers will have it for only 41 more seconds. And, of course, if that sack was huge, if Kansas, like Max was alluding to, got that first down, not only would they have better field position, but that would assure them to punt with the wind if they had to punt at all. So now Missouri will have 
perhaps at the last, certainly the last possession with a win at their backs. Kansas was able to shorten this third quarter somewhat with not scoring drives, but drives where they took time off the clock. KU has turned it over three times. Missouri has not given it away. Six to three, Kansas late in the third. Here's Smith in the gun. Back to throw, and he's chased. Here he comes to the near sideline, and he's running out of bounds. He gained a couple of three yards. Banks Floodman was chasing him after Charlton Keith really was bearing down on him. Charlton almost had him again. You know, that's a very difficult thing that to bring Brad Smith down in space. It's very difficult when you're also dealing with an offensive tackle blocking you. But certainly Charlton is the one that's getting Brad out of the pocket. And as soon as he starts taking off, he's not looking for receivers downfield. Second and eight. He's only rushed for 24 yards today. That's a... Uh, a far cry from last week. That stopped the clock when he got out of bounds. Pass play to Coffey on the sideline. He knew the first down yardage. He may have it. Theo Baines knocked him out. They threw a sideline pass, and Missouri used just a few seconds there to get it into first down territory, or very close. They put it down at the 42. It brings up third and a yard. Clock stopped. 30 seconds to play third quarter. Six to three, Jayhawks. KU has the win in the fourth quarter. And when you operate out the shotgun, it really makes that third and one more difficult. Here is the third down play. Smith runs for the first down. To the Jayhawk out there in the middle of the field, and he's at the Missouri 49, dropped by Rodney Fowler, but a first down Mizzou, and they stop the clock to move the chain. 25 seconds to play in this third quarter. Neither team has scored in the second half so far. Now the clock running, 20 seconds. Now down to 15 seconds in the third period. Missouri a first down near midfield. And the snap back to Brad Smith. He's going to run to the right. He's going to pitch it wide. And the ball is going. Keep coming. stayed up in the air. Tlaib using a great speed. He intercepted a pitch on an option. Yeah, boy, you don't see that very often. I mean, where the defensive back can get in front of the receiver on a little pitch out in the flat. And what a huge turnover that is on almost the last play of the third quarter. Akib Tlaib ended up with the ball. He took it away from the Tiger, who was the pitch man right there. It was Brad Ekwer Ekwu. Now KU takes over at the Missouri 43-yard line. Four seconds to play in the third quarter. And a handoff goes to Clark Green. He gets outside left. And to the boundary over there inside the 40 and down to about the 37, a gain of six. And that's the final play of the third quarter. KU has the win the rest of the way. KU time of possession, almost nine minutes in the third. Missouri had it only six minutes when they had the wind. So a timeout at the end of the third quarter. It's Kansas six, Missouri three. We'll be back. You're listening to Jayhawk football. Six to three, Kansas. We go to the fourth quarter. Max, remember KU gave Missouri the, the wind and the ball and start the third quarter. And KU dominated time of possession. They still have the lead of three points. And now they've got second and five at the Tiger 38-yard line. And a good thing, Gordon's back in, he's running. And here's a fake pass, a run by Swanson. First down to the 30-yard line. He pulled the ball down and ran with it. He got hit by the linebacker, Christopher, but it's a first down run by Jason Swanson. And Jason had patience. He got back in the pocket. He let the linebackers clear out. Then he takes off. He learned from his mistake in the first half. He tucked the ball away when he knew he was going to feel pressure and gets Kansas a much-needed first down. And now they're in that scoring territory. Of course, Kansas wants touchdowns, not just field goals. That was Talib's, uh, Talib's second interception of the year. And like the other one, went for zero yards, but who cares? Here's a running play, and they got some running yardage here as Clark Green lugs it inside the 25, down close to the 21. Boy, that's about an eight-yard pickup right there. Great run. And, you know, I think all the better runs for Kansas in the second half have been off the left side. Cesar Rodriguez, Big Bob Whitaker have been doing a great job on some of these long runs for KU. 
Second and two it is for Kansas at the Missouri 21. We're in the opening minute of the fourth quarter. KU has the lead of three. They have the ball, they have the wind. John Cornish now in at tailback. Swanson goes under center. And it's a draw play to Cornish, and boy, he's hit immediately. No gain on that play. It'll bring third and two. Well, actually, it was a loss of yards, and that's going to make it much more difficult, make decision-making a little more difficult, whether you want to run or pass. If Kansas just could have got a yard even coming up short, I think they could have easily run for that. Now Brandon McAnderson comes into the backfield. Jamar Smith, the nose man, really blew up that play for Missouri. Now it's third and three. 13.40 to play in the game. KU leads by a field goal. Third and three for the Hawks. Two running backs, they're in the eye. McAnderson and Cornish. Swanson along county, options back to Cornish, running right, 20, 15, down to the 10. He's hit there. First down, Kansas. They got Cornish outside again. Versus the blitz, and great call by Mangino Quatero. And that option play in there, feeling that Missouri is going to blitz from the inside, doing the quick speed option on the outside for an easy first down. Well, you love the way this guy from Canada can run with the football. He's taking football seriously this year, and he's really come through. Is it first and goal? Yeah, pretty much. It's yes. right on the 10-yard line on yes. the right hash mark. The chains are thrown down on the ground. So here we go. First down at that point. Double tight end with Fine and Vorson both in there. Two wide outs to the left. Draw play. Cornish running left. Down to the five. To the goal line. of 2005 Cornish the Kansas offense a big touchdown here this afternoon and now they point after try the earlier PAT was blocked 12 to 3 KU John Lamb's the holder the ball put down the kicks up the kick is good and we still have 12 59 to play in the game as we get a timeout Kansas 13, Missouri 3. We'll be back on the Jayhawk Radio Network. We're ready to kick off here. KU leading by 10. Just under 13 minutes to play in the game. Temple at the goal line for Missouri. Scott Webb will kick it right to left with the wind at his back. Here's the run up and the kick. A line drive down the field. No return. It's out of the end zone. Bob, apparently they ruled that uh, recovery by Tlaib as a fumble rather than an intercepted pass because I guess it was a lateral throw, although the ball never did hit the ground. Yep. At, at any rate, it is credited to Tlaib as a fumble recovery rather than an intercepted pass. It's getting loud here at Memorial Stadium now. The difference in this second half, Kansas running the football, Missouri cannot run the football. Tigers at their own 20. Brad Smith back in the pocket, looks to throw. Here's the pass. It is caught for a first down up to the 32. Well thrown to William Franklin. Franklin had a couple of long catches against KU last year, a 40 and a 46-yarder as they tried to rally. First down, Mizzou. They're going against the wind here. Mizzou scored a couple of fourth-quarter touchdowns a year ago, but they were too far behind by then. First down, there's Smith looking, going to the far side. He's got a man on the sideline. It's caught over there at about the 41 by Sean Coffey. He's dragged down just short of the first down yardage. Well, Missouri actually has had comebacks both against, uh, certainly against Iowa State. They had a close game against uh, uh, Oklahoma State, and Nebraska, of course, was a close game. So they've been in a lot of close games before and had some good fourth quarters. Second down and about two. Tigers at their own 42-yard line. 12.15 to go. Smith play action. He's back to throw. Steps up. Throws incomplete. We're trying to get the ball up the field to the tight end, Martin Rucker, and he overthrew Rucker, who's 6'5". Jerome Kemp, who is 5'9", was defending. How's that for a jump ball? Well, Smith is getting time, but again, he's staying into the pocket, and that's not exactly where he feels comfortable. Well, it's third and two right here after the incompletion. Third and two. Smith in the shotgun. He's going to run it. Here he comes. He's got a first down. Boy, he is so dangerous with that ball. He found enough of a crease to get it across the 45. 
for a first down for Missouri. Now they bring it back and mark it at the 45. Boy, and about five or six changes in the KU defense by Coach Bill Young and his associates right there. First down, Tigers at the Missouri 45. 12 minutes to go. I have snap. Smith didn't see it. It goes over his head. He goes back to cover it inside the 25. The center, Adam Speaker, snapped it over his head. Not a turnover, but a tremendous mistake there by the Tigers. Oh, my goodness. And a loss of down, of course, and that's just part of playing on the road. The communication is not being good. Smith has been struggling somewhat, getting calls from the sideline. And, of course, that's one of the downside from getting your play from the sideline as you're looking on the sideline and not at the center. Second down and 31 for Missouri at their 24-yard line. Smith in the shotgun. There's the snap to him. He's got this one. He's back to throw. Now he wants to run. He runs out to the right. He looks. He throws it away into the KU sideline. Jermiah Ashley was hanging on him. There are about four guys over there in gold shirts right by the line of scrimmage on the Missouri side. And they, as a team, call in every play to Brad Smith. And their arms winding furiously. Watch them. They're all going at the same time. A communication certainly is, is not going well for Missouri from the sideline. And again, Smith looking at the sideline did not see the center snap. And that was the result of that big loss. Now it's third and 31 for Mizzou. Stop him here. The Hawks get the ball back. Smith has time. He throws far side. It is almost intercepted. It's incomplete. Theo Baines almost had it. Boy, Theo so mad at himself for not. There's a flag down. Hold on. KU making, getting their punt return team out there. Let's see what the penalty is. There's the referee. Offside. Number 99 oh defense. Five yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Offsides, Kansas. Third down. Missouri will get another chance. Oh boy. That was Charlton Keith ruled offside by the line judge. Yeah, that's not going to be the kind that's going to be killers. You don't want the automatic first down. That's no, the kind that's of penalty right. that KU couldn't handle here. It's still going to be a long ways to get to the first down. Remember, Brad Smith is throwing into a breeze against a fierce Kansas defensive rush. Still third down and 30 yards to go. Three-man rush coming up here. Third and uh, 31. Smith has the snap. He steps back. He looks to throw. He cranks up. Throws long to the far side. And it's incomplete. Ooh. He was trying to throw it to William Franklin. A another Tiger receiver was in the area along with a couple of Jayhawk defenders. The other Tiger down there was Chase Kaufman, the 6'7 player. That's a little scary right there. Oh, well, I tell you, Smith showed some arm strength there against the wind. Now Missouri must punt against this wind. Charles Gordon standing between the 30 and the 25 for Kansas. And you start watching the clock under 11 minutes left in the football game. KU leading 13 to 3. Cross it'll punt from about the Missouri 20. Low snap, but he picked it up. And a high kick. The wind will push it. Gordon asks for a fair catch, and he's got it at the Jayhawk 38-yard line. So KU will have the ball here with 10.43 to play in the game, and we get a timeout. 10.43 to go. Kansas 13, Missouri 3. You're listening to Jayhawk football. And back in Lawrence, KU has the ball back. They're at their own 38-yard line with a first down. And 10.43 to play in the game. Kansas leading by 10 points. KU hasn't beaten Missouri three straight in 10 years, but they're thinking about it right now. now this is a big possession here. You'd like to eat up some time and add to the lead. No turnovers would be the first priority. Jason Swanson in the shotgun. He's got Clark Green to his right. Two receivers in there. Hand it to Green. Straight ahead. 45 to the 50. 45 to the 40. And down to the Missouri. 38. Well, that's your man, Clark Green. Out of Tampa, Florida. Well, we thought he was kind of a conservative runner until today, but he loves these Missouri Tigers. It's just he, an inside zone handoff, and Clark really doesn't even have to make a move. Credit Ochoa up front and both offensive guards on the offensive line. So that might put him up around 100 yards for the second year in a row against the Tigers. And now 10.25 to go. First down, Kansas at the Missouri 37. He's got 96 yards right now. Here comes Cornish in for Clark Green. Cornish has had a big day as well. They've each scored a touchdown. Cornish has 57 yards, two of them with uh, 
160 yards for the day. And here's a handoff to Cornish trying to go up the middle and not much, not as much room this time, but a gain of about four. Diedrich Harrington, the middle linebacker, makes the tackle, but it's a gain of four, second and six, and KU's at the Mizzou 34, Max. Jayhawks lead, 13 to three. The clock is running, 9.45 to play in the game. That key first down run by, by Green, Cantrell, Ochoa, Whitaker up front provided big space for Clark Green as he motored down into Missouri territory. Foster to the far side, three wide outs to the near side, including Gordon. KU, would they put it in the air here? Let's call it second and seven, actually. Swanson wants to throw. It's a shovel pass, and nobody caught it. It's picked up by a Tiger, but that's an incomplete pass. And they're lucky that nobody did catch it, namely Missouri. Yep. So now it'll be third and seven. Well, Jason was showing patience, and I, I've said that word a lot, but you got to wait to the right time to do a shovel pass, to do a quarterback draw. And I thought that was there, but he just wasn't able to connect with John Cornish. Four minutes to play at Lincoln. It's Oklahoma 31, Nebraska 24. Oh, boy. What a ball game there. So now KU, a big third down call as Swanson looks over here to the KU sideline. Third and seven. Play clock's down to eight. Brian Luke and Adam Barman with baseball caps on around. Play clock to four, and they're going to call timeout. It's a big timeout. decision to be made on this play. And we're going to get an official timeout, I believe. So Mark Mangino says, come on over here, guys. I need to, I need to talk to you. We've got the timeout. 9.23 to go. 13 to 3 KU on the Jayhawk Network. Well, another big play here. KU Max third and seven at the Missouri 34. They'd love to hang on to the ball. They lead 13 to 3. And what do you think we'll see here on third down? Well, I think they'll put it up in the air. Uh, you're looking at a 52-yard field goal from right here, so Kansas needs to move forward to have an attempt even with the win. They've got the shotgun and two running backs back there to block, Clark Green and Brandon McAnderson. Swanson in the gun, three receivers, two on the near side. Swanson to throw. He is, the pocket collapses, and he's pulled down at the 35 by Missouri's Brian Smith, along with striker Shulock, the two defensive ends. That didn't work very well at all. About a three-step drop for Jason, but uh, well, here comes Scott Webb. Well, Apparently, they'll attempt to attempt a field goal. And you know the scary thing here: we've had an extra point blocked. You, you risk something by going for this here. You risk the fact that they could block it and return it for a score. But uh, Webb's got to get that ball up in the air. Of course, if you miss it, they have pretty good field position. 51-yard try. Lambs the holder. The ball put down. The kick's on the way. The wind behind it. The kick is no good. It's off to the right. It had distance, but yeah. not accuracy. Well, he hasn't made one that far all season, but uh, that's, that's too bad for Kansas because it, with eight and a half minutes, it gives Missouri new life, new hope. Tigers have been a great late in the ball game team let's pass along and open the kansas lottery tonight super kansas cash jackpot one million seventy thousand dollars put yourself in a winning state play kansas lottery i think it was a good gamble just that scott webb had plenty of foot and wasn't far off but it it doesn't work out kansas just needs to come out and play defense missouri takes over at its own 34 smith back to throw puts it up and it is caught at midfield and tackled at the 48 is sean coffee 48 of Kansas. He was hit by Jerome Kemp, but here comes Missouri striking through the air against the wind. And they move into KU territory. They only trail by 10 points. And they stop the clock while they move the chain. 8.31 to go. Smith was right on target to the 6'5 wide receiver, Sean Coffey, out of East Cleveland. Of course, now's not the time to be doing any kind of panic or changing game plan. Make Smith beat you back in the pocket. Use your three, four-man rush to put whatever pressure they We're can. Checking. Keep the, the game linebackers clock. back, watching for Smith to run the football. Remember, Smith might be more of a threat as far as going the distance, running the football, as opposed to throwing the football. Now, they, the referee says they want to check the game clock, and the referee, uh, Tom Walker, comes over here to get on the headset on the near sideline. And while they do that, we'll remind you that at Best Buy, there's a world of options. Let's find the one with your name on it. Best Buy. Thousands of possibilities. 
get yours. Missouri Tigers are looking for their fourth conference win in a row. KU looking for its first conference win of the year. And that would level the Jayhawks for the season at four and four and still keep them thinking about a bowl possibility for which you must have six wins. And we talk about this wind a lot and more than probably what most teams do. That's because with a with a defense, this win means more to your football team. And that's certainly in the favor of Kansas right now. Smith's going to have to throw it into this win. More chances for that ball to hang. That's why Kansas just needs to be patient, get whatever they can as far as pressure on Smith and wait for some type of mistake. Make him go the entire length of the field. It's very difficult to stay consistent against this KU defense. Well, a long delay here. With 8.31 to on the clock, the, the referee. Clock is correct at 8.31. And after all that, they decide it's correct. All right. So here's Missouri, first down at the Jayhawk 48-yard line now. Smith in that shotgun with the empty backfield, five receivers. Oh, the Missouri lineman moved way too early. Flags are thrown. I think it was the left tackle. It's going to be on Missouri, all right. So that'll cost them five yards. And again, the KU crowd making noise. Here's the referee. Before the snap, ball start. Number 79 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. That is the left tackle, Tyler Llewellyn you out know, of Bethany, I'm, Missouri. David. I mentioned, Bob, that uh, Kansas might use four linebackers right now, uh, three down linemen. They're doing that right now. If you look at, at, at uh, Perkins in the middle, Nick Reed, and they got Eric Washington and Kevin Kane, four linebackers. Here's the snap to Brad Smith. He wants to run, trying to get outside, and still trying to string it out, and he's pulled down by Theo Baines. Smith could never turn and get around that corner. Well, if you can play defense with a secondary, you're four against their wideouts. Use the linebackers for the short coverage zones and mirroring Brad Smith. I think you've got a great chance for success. That's just what KU's doing with these four linebackers. So it's second and 16, Missouri, at the Tiger 46. Smith's got the ball again. Here comes the rush. He is going to be sacked. They got him from the edge. Carlton Keith came around to nail him. Oh, I tell you, Carlton Keith had a tremendous game. He's had a great season. He might be playing for money next year. Yeah, he got a chance. It'll be third down, Missouri, back at their 41 now, third and 21. 725 to play in the game. And can you doing this, Bob, without bringing linebackers or doing this with a great front? Here's the third down play. Smith's back. He's got time. He looks. He rolls out. Now he turns to the left. He looks to throw it. Here comes a pass as he's hit. It's incomplete. They got just enough pressure from Paul Como to disrupt the pass, and Missouri now fourth down. That looked like Sandlot football right there. I mean, nobody was able to get to the passer. All the receivers were covered. Everybody running around finally bounced it off the ground. Well, you're talking about, what, uh, eight guys out in the coverage lanes, short and long. So Brad Smith looking into a lot of crimson and blue jerseys. Here's the punter, cross it onto the field. And the clock definitely Kansas ally. A little over seven minutes to go. Missouri's gonna have to give the ball up. It's a two possession game, KU with a 10 point lead. They need to use a lot of time when they get the ball. Gordon inside the 20 awaiting the punt from Adam Crossett. Crossett sends it up the field. High kick. Charles asks for a fair catch, and they're not going to touch oh. it. It takes a big KU bounce. Did it ever. It hits at about the 28 and goes back to about the 38. Oh, that, wow. That football is crazy sometimes. And it's oblong. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. It bounced straight backwards. We've got a timeout. With 6.59 to go, Kansas 13, Missouri 3 on the Jayhawk Network. Well, we're now down to 6.59 to play. KU takes over at its own 38. KU leads Missouri 13-3. Bob, this is a game that could save the season for KU. They certainly have a chance against Nebraska next week. They go to the shotgun. Swanson on a handoff, gives to the running back, and Cornish hit behind the line of scrimmage. Guy gets back up on his feet. He didn't go down, but now they really pound him down at inside the 30-yard line. Well, that play didn't go at all. That's going to be about a nine-yard loss right there. John was not able to elude at the first man. It might have been the nose tackle. Couldn't quite get him sidestepped, and he kept rolling around doing Time 360s. Out. 
it's important Missouri, that John, when he fights for that extra team, effort, doesn't put the ball on the ground. Kansas cannot turn the ball over. I don't think they have to score. Just punt the ball. Don't turn the ball well, over. Well, Missouri's called a timeout. They have two more remaining. We'll keep it right here. Don't forget Hawk Talk Thursday nights. 6.06 here on the Jayhawk Network with Coach Mangino. We're at Longhorn Steakhouse, 31st in Iowa here in Lawrence. Longhorn Steakhouse, the home of Hawk Talk. We'll see you Thursday night. And Colorado leads Kansas State, the last we heard. Now it's 13 to 10. Oklahoma 31, Nebraska 24, nearing the end of the ball game. Just underway, Iowa State and the Texas Aggies. And in a ball game that certainly would appear to be a blowout tonight, uh, Texas plays Oklahoma State. Well, Max, I think you mentioned, uh, we talked about at the beginning of the broadcast, this is this is one of those season changers of what can happen to Kansas' future should they win out here today with a win at their back and play defense. It's certainly winnable games uh, against at, both at home against Nebraska and uh, and Iowa State. And certainly with this kind of defense, uh, you, you, you're not going to give anything up. You go down to Austin playing a very good team. But with this defense, let me tell you, they continue to impress. Well, they're fantastic. They're second in the nation right. against the rush. Here's second down. It's second and 18 for KU at its own 29. They lost eight yards on that play. Here comes a toss play to Cornish. Not much there. He gets to the 30 and follow the ball. Ooh. And let's see if it went out of bounds. It may have gone out of bounds. You want to hope that it had. The ball came out, but uh, it's still KU's ball as it did go out of bounds. Oh, man. Be careful, guys. So third down. They did gain a little yardage on the play. It's third and 16. Well, again, that's when you have to be smart. You don't have to score again to win this football game. What you need to do is uh, get a drive, try to establish better field position, run the football, take more time off the clock. But if it comes to between taking a gamble, staying up for extra effort, going against maybe four Tiger defenders, maybe it's uh, best served just to go down and uh, uh, keep the clock running and punt the football on fourth down. Jayhawks at their own 31. They need the 48 for a first down. Because the Tigers have to score twice to tie this game. Yeah, one one of being a field goal. That's right. Third down play. Swanson throws out in the flat. Caught over there by Mark Simmons. Simmons to the 40 and fighting to the 45 and a little bit short of the first down. But there's a catch by Simmons. And now they're in pretty good shape to punt the ball. That's his 32nd straight game in which he's caught a pass. And well, would have been great had he gotten the first down. He was close, wasn't he? Was awfully close. Second charge. Curry calls another timeout. Time We're at 622 to play in the game. Don't forget, after the game, Josh Klingler has the Delta Dental Scoreboard Show here on the network. The Delta Dental Scoreboard Show after our broadcast on the Jayhawk Network. And we have 622 to play in our ball game. Here's another Big 12 score in the fourth quarter. Texas Tech 12, Baylor nothing. Well, David, that was a good play there, but now they will have to punt at fourth and two, but instead of punting from deep in your own territory, they can punt it from uh, about the 35 or so and maybe stick Missouri deep in its own territory. Yeah, with Kyle Tucker, I don't even know that the, he needed the additional help uh, with the pass play to Simmons. The important thing is the punt does not get, have a good snap, get the punt off, get it nice and high, allow your coverage units to go down, and just make Missouri go uh, at the least 80 yards, and I, I just don't think that Missouri can do that today. The game plan uh, initiated by Bill Young, Mark Mangino, is just as solid as ever. And, of course, the defense, as good as it's been the last two years, is even better in 2005. Tommy Saunders on as the return man now for Missouri. He's a backup wide receiver. Kyle Tucker will punt from about his own 35. Right to left, the wind at his back. KU leading by 10. Here's the step up in the kick. A high, towering blast down the field. It'll reach the end zone. And Missouri will start at its 20-yard line with 6.14 to play. Kevin Kane has been back in all game as the long snapper. You know, the three plays in which he did not snap the ball last Saturday night at Boulder, Colorado, proved to be nearly fatal. But then he came back in, finished up, and he did a good job right there under a lot of pressure. Well, here's Missouri's offense back out against this KU defense. Bob, and again, Kansas, instead of going to the nickel package, is using four linebackers. Here's Smith on first down. He's back to throw. He sets up. He rolls out to the right, looking to throw, and he throws as he's hit. Incomplete. 
Second down, Missouri. And, and he's sowing that with Brandon Perkins and Paul, Paul Como, Como yeah. all over him, and he's floating it against the wind in the middle. I think Kansas is going to get another interception. I think it's inevitable if he keeps floating it out there in the middle of the field like that. Right, We're down Dave. to 6.05. Like you said earlier, with a three-man rush, you got, you got eight other guys running around back there looking for that football. Yeah, and Perkins went on a late rush, but even when Perkins goes on the rush, you still have three linebackers to cover Smith if he gets loose. Now second and 10, Missouri. Smith's got the snap, drops straight back, sets up, throws up the field, way overthrown, incomplete. Third down coming up. Now look at, let's look at Brad Smith's numbers. He's thrown 30 passes. He's completed 11 for 108 yards. He's rushed. 19 times for 27 yards. Wow. That's a long ways from 480 a week ago. He was trying to get it to the 6-5 coffee. He was covered by the 5-9 Jerome Kemp. Third and 10, Missouri at the Tiger 20. 5.58 to play in the game. KU leads 13-3. Smith, play action fake, back to throw. He is scrambling, got away from one man, runs out to the side, and runs out of bounds. Then he throws. It's in, picked off, I think. No, it's incomplete. I thought Smith was out of bounds over there. Well, that was that's an awfully close call. What right are they going to rule? It's either an incomplete pass or he was out of bounds. They're showing fourth down, incomplete pass. I, I, I saw two holds on the play as well. Ashley and Keek were both held uh, at least momentarily. I'm surprised that one of those didn't get called. But as it is, Brad Smith still in the game. Looks like they're going to go for it all right here on fourth and ten at their own 20. Well, I'd like to see wow. Slow Mo on that, whether he was out of bounds or not. Yeah. But whatever, both. Well, here's maybe your ball game right now. 5.48 to play. Missouri's going to go for it on fourth and ten at their own 20. Well, Charlton Keith, he was denied last time because he was held. Let's see if he can get there. There's the snap. Smith is back. Now he's going to run, and he is going to be getting away from a man he may have the first down out to the 30 he sure does boy no flags on that play one of his best runs of the afternoon right well, Missouri's here. still alive 539 to play in the game he just did get the first down boy fourth and ten boy. back on your 20 yard line and you and, run it and, and you make it now you would have liked to have had that flag on the hold in the previous play absolutely and Charlton and Jamile both needed out they were just gassed they've been chasing Brad all over the field, so we're without the two top defensive ends. Now 5.30 to go, Smith back, looks to throw, here's the pass, and is it incomplete? I think so. Let's see what they call. call oh, they're calling it a catch at the 41. William Franklin down around the, the turf. It's ruled a catch, and the KU defenders thought it was incomplete. At least they made that signal, but what they think doesn't matter. Here's a replay coming up on the big video board. Maybe we can see it better. Yeah, he may have had it on his knees. Then he went down, though. Uh, they may be delaying this a little bit to let the people upstairs look at it or know they're going to maybe measure. And while they do that, we'll mention that if you've been drinking, find a safe ride home. No matter what logic you use, you drink, you drive, you lose. This reminder from the Kansas Department of Transportation. Well, it's a first down for Missouri at the 41. The Tigers still breathing. 5.20 to play in the game. Boy, they were fourth down back on their own 20-yard line. Missouri needs a touchdown and a field goal to tie it. 13-3 to Jayhawks. Missouri with just one timeout left, and again, going into this win, and still Kansas without Ashley and Charlton Keith, but they're certainly getting water right now, ready to come back in soon. Here's the snap back to Smith. He's got time. He throws it. It is caught on the sideline by Coffey. He went out of bounds in KU territory Another at the 47. Down. Another first down right there. Sean Coffey, the veteran, 6'5", 220, and he's a wide receiver, keep in mind. Boy, now the KU defense trying to suck it up here. Missouri got a huge play on fourth down at their own 20 from Brad Smith. And you'd like to have more rush, and now Kansas rush coming in with both Ashley and Keith rested after a couple plays. First down, Mizzou. Here is Smith. Here comes the blitz. Here's the pass. Incomplete to Coffey on the far side. And Brandon Perkins really belted Brad Smith as he threw the ball. Now 5.06 to go. Now Brad's got a tendency when he's feeling pressure to throw the ball up, and it really kind of floats in the air, up in the air, susceptible much more to interception when he receives pressure. Second down, Missouri. They're at the Jayhawk 47, second and 10. They're not huddling, they're hurrying. 
Smith in the shotgun. Here comes pressure. And here comes the pass. Incomplete over the middle. Trying to throw it again to the veteran Sean Coffey. Theo Baines covering for Kansas. And we haven't talked enough about Aqib Tlaib and Theo Baines that made it possible to have Charles on the defensive end. I don't recall seeing Charles on the defensive end, and it doesn't appear to have hurt Kansas this afternoon. Third and ten, Tigers. They're three out of 16 on third down conversion. At the KU 30, uh, 47, here is Smith back to throw it, and it is caught. Boy. And a penalty flag from the field judge over here. That's 100 miles away. That's Boy, on 50 yards away, certainly. Coffee made the catch, and what's the penalty over here? That was on the exact opposite side of the field from the play. Field judge, this guy's thrown a couple of big flags that today. That may be a hold on Ronnie Amati. Well, they have a first down anyway, but now they're getting a little farther down the field and still almost five minutes to go. David, you were talking about that interception. You want to order that up right now? Certainly, Kansas. Holy. Number 17 on the defense. Penalties decline. Result of play. First down. Ronnie cannot hold him. He can get in front of him as long as the ball's not in the air. He can have contact. He cannot hold the receiver. Well, that's a big third down play for Mizzou. Now they've got a first down at the Kansas 36. Smith's got it. He's back to throw. He puts it up. Got a man downfield. It is Buck Ward. Theo Baines may have picked it off. Here's a flag thrown. What is the flag? If that cannot be interference, I, I did not see it on Theo. It'll be interesting to see how this goes. Theo had turned around. Baines came up with the ball, it appeared. Couldn't now possibly, what are they going to call? Couldn't possibly be on him. Nick Reed says it's on Missouri. Theo Baines came up with the ball right near the goal line. Kevin Kane pressured the quarterback on the play. And there's that interception we were looking yeah. for. Into the win, Theo Baines coming over, playing cornerback. Charles Gordon not on the defensive side in the corner position. Solid today. So the good news is KU has the ball. Now the other side is they don't have it in great field position. Well, they don't care about that. All they need to do is run off some time. Four minutes, 42 seconds left. Probably one first down might do it. That might be a, could that be a face mask when they were tackling? The ball was ball. intercepted by Kansas. His momentum carried the player into the end zone. The momentum rule would put the ball where he intercepted the ball, which would be the first, would be the first one yard line. During the play, it is on Missouri, the 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Well, thank you very much, say the Jayhawks. Wow. That's the longest speech I've ever heard from a referee. Yeah, and half of it cut out, but there was a face mask penalty. Maybe you caught that, maybe you didn't against Missouri after Theo Baines had intercepted the ball. So instead of having it at the one or two yard line, they'll have it at the 16. Well, that's much nicer, isn't it? Great man coverage by Theo Baines. Did an outstanding job, got his head turned around so it couldn't have possibly been interference on Theo. Now Kansas run the ball, hold on to it. Clark Green in a one back set. Swanson under center, and they play it to Clark Green. Behind the right side of the line, maybe a yard, no more. Missouri has one timeout remaining. Brian Smith made that tackle. And Ryan Cantrell is in a lot of pain. He's face down, and uh, the medical staff immediately comes out here. Ryan, who made his first start here this afternoon after playing much of the way last week at Colorado. And they're out to take a look at him right now with 4.37 to play in our ball game. Well, what a job. I would say he has done up front, the redshirt freshman from Sugar Land, Texas. They're looking at his left knee. Oh boy. Rodriguez, Cesar Rodriguez, Bob Whitaker, David Ochoa, Cantrell, and Matt Thompson have been the offensive linemen most of the day, but now you're worried about Ryan Cantrell, who has really played hard. Travis Dombach, who, by the way, is from Jackson, Missouri, would be the man to go in and replace Cantrell at right guard. And credit Cantrell and Ochoa and Bob Whitaker, Cesar Rodriguez, and Matt Thompson, who came in after the first series. You know, Kansas won the game running the football. Even, you know, they didn't score a lot. They took time off the clock. They limited possessions by Missouri, made the game shorter, and they didn't have to do any more than that to provide uh, a great opportunity for a win, which I think Kansas will get today from one of the best defenses in the United States. Well, they're still looking at the injured player, Ryan Cantrell. He was a redshirt player last year. He 
has been the backup center, but now at right guard, and now he's up, and they're going to help him off the field a little bit, although he's pretty much under his own steam as he comes off limping. Second and 10 for KU, the Jayhawks at their own 16-yard line. He was a baseball and a football letterman at uh, Sugar Land, Texas. 4.37 to play in the game. KU leading by 10 points. Missouri has not scored a touchdown today. And now the clock, it's stopped right now after this injury situation. And, Bob, they haven't even got extremely close. After a couple of KU turnovers, you know, they, they got close to the red zone. I'm not so sure that they were ever there, yeah. but uh, the Kansas defense simply has not given Missouri anything as long as Kansas can uh, run another play, another two plays, get Missouri to use their last time out, pump the ball, long field. I don't think Missouri can score against this Kansas Clock defense. running now, 4.15 to go. Shotgun formation. Second and 10. Oh, Swanson's going to put it up. It's over here to Simmons. He runs to the 20, 25, to the 30. A first down at the 34. Now they'll get three more plays. And Coach Mark Mangino liked that one a whole lot. He threw his arms up in the air. He was pleased with that fine play. We owe you a station break. We're past 3 o'clock, 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to Jayhawk football. <laughs> Many of the Missouri fans who are here today over on the far side are headed into the exits right now well they didn't make it till halftime in columbia a week ago they stayed quite a while you mean last year yeah oh, excuse me. yeah gotcha that last week they were okay first down for ku at the jayhawk 34 it's a running play to clark green and clark protecting that ball picks up about five yards and the clock's now at 3:30 to go and missouri has just one time out left and for mr green that gives him a 100 yard day wow pretty, pretty good huh 13 to 3 Jayhawks looking for their first conference win of the year and then hosting Nebraska next Saturday. Nebraska lost at home today to Oklahoma. It was quite a game, 31-24 and Sooners. This, and this Missouri team blasted Nebraska last week, so keep your fingers crossed. Well, let's see if you can run out this clock here. We're down to three minutes to go. Second and six it is for Kansas. The Jayhawk 37-yard line. Swanson under center. And they played a Clark Green who ran into a teammate, and down he goes at the 36. Jamar Smith, the nose guard, helped him down. Now third I'm down out. coming up. And Missouri. they faked the reverse that They're time to Gordon, and charge. Missouri has just out. used its last timeout. They can't stop the clock anymore. Well, unless KU can get six yards on this next play, Missouri will get the ball back. And now 2.51 to play in our ball game. Well, Jason Swanson has three turnovers against him. It's he snapped out of the uh, funk that he was in early on, has recovered from that, and may have guided his team to a season-saving victory. Well, and a lot of talk in the week, certainly, uh, in the Kansas City area, which has so much interest in this game, about the huge mismatch at the quarterback position. Aside from the turnovers, I, you have the stats with you, but I don't think they would suggest a mismatch in favor of the Tigers at the quarterback position. Guys, there was a loss on that last play of a couple of yards. So this is actually going to be third and eight for KU at their own 35. Well, Brad Smith's 14 for 37 with that huge interception just a minute ago. Now 2.51 to go. The clock stopped. Missouri's used all its timeouts. Here comes a show of a blitz. Swanson's in the shotgun. It's a handoff. Clark Green to the 40. And a first down! Hey, that might be your ball game right there. Clark Green out to the 44-yard line. Well, I tell you, the KU fans haven't left today. The Missouri fans have, but listen to this KU crowd. You know, and, and Don Fambro, of course, most everyone knows the importance of this game to him, and he's always said for three decades that I've known him that certain people come up and play this Missouri game differently than other games. And if you look at Clark Green and yeah. what he's been able to do, he's that kind of player. And look at the frustrations that Brad Smith, an excellent football player, look at his frustrations against Kansas. And you look at uh, his career and, and, of course, Pinkle's season and how it's going to be darkened with a loss here in Lawrence. And off Clark Green to the 50-yard line, a gain of six yards. They can't stop the clock now. 2.10 to go. They're going to put an announcement on the PA shortly about the goal well posts. they can't get these goal posts they collapse well they do but they're yeah. gonna they're gonna say to the kids let us get them down first then take them if you want them 
But you know, after that incident in oh, Minnesota oh, last week, I know. Well, you don't want to be running out there climbing those goalposts. Hawks in no hurry. 15 on the play clock. They come out of the huddle. 13 to three, Kansas. And the rock chalk chant in the background here with 48,000 plus at Memorial Stadium. Swanson under center. On second down, they go to the money man, Clark Green, running to the 45, to the Missouri 40, and a first down and more to the 38. And now a minute 30 to go. Hawks are going to beat Mizzou three years in a row. The clock deepest, is stopped for the first down. The deepest penetration Missouri's had in the second half was the Kansas 47-yard line. Three years going in underdogs against the University of Missouri. Three wins in this border showdown. You, Kind of have to wonder why, uh, you know, if people, how surprised they are that this Kansas defense did so well against this Brad Smith offense. They've done it two consecutive years, and of course, now they this KU defense is something else. Now they can go to a knee, a minute 15 to play. Swanson under center, everybody grouped around him. Swanson's gone all the way today in his start here. And he drops, he got drops back, now he goes to a knee. And now one minute to play in our game. Listen to these fans here in Lawrence. Look for those KU students over there. They are roaring. They are waving those white towels. It's down to 48 seconds to go. There's been a lot of frustration by everyone in this Big 12 portion of the schedule. A lot of good play, particularly by the defense, but coming up short on wins, this is a feel good for everyone involved. Now one more drop to the knee and this baby will be over. Look at Coach Mangino. <laughs> Is he a happy guy? Yes, yeah, Swanson Huggy. has the snap. He drops to his right knee, and the time will run out. Missouri cannot stop the clock, so it doesn't matter. Here comes Gary Pinkle from the far side to shake hands with Mark Mangino. 15 seconds on the clock. Mangino just hugged Floodman and Kane, his two senior linebackers. Time is running out. They're going to get those goal posts anyway. Oh, boy. Be careful, kids. That is so dangerous. Time is out. KU wins it. Final score, Jayhawks 13, Missouri 3. KU has beaten the Tigers three years in a row. And the celebration begins here in River City. Time out. The game is over, and KU wins it 13 to 3. And we've got our recap and plays of the game all coming up on our Jayhawk post-game show. We'll be back. You're listening to Jayhawk Football.